creating cosmos out of chaos. I was not meant to be in this time and space continuum. <laughs> like, the digital? Oh my God. The, yeah, just the world of all of it. I just I feel you. I, I prefer you to be too. unplugged and I'm like, I just can't. Honestly. I'm an analog, literally. I'd still have a flip phone if I could. They're like the dark art tools to like bring light into the world. It's yeah. insane. Well, it's you guys have mastered it and I've just, I've shied away and was able to because I have the physical space. I don't know there's if no there's master. mastering. It's just like we yeah. fight with it. Yeah, it's a treadmill. But you guys make it look so eloquent Thank and you. graceful. But Thank it, you. It's, it's a treadmill because it's just like YouTube or Instagram. You're just constantly like you have to keep it going, you have to keep keeping it going. alive. It's like you posted something, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Like it never it, stops. It feels know? like it started being like, um, like a tool for expression, right? Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, all these business intentions have mixed their way in. And, mm -hmm. it, and then it becomes like a songwriter that feels they have to write a new song. And it's like, so you have to post. And then how do you creative express when you're like having... And there's the have to. Yeah. And the then obligation. You're like, and, and like, we just sit there like, I don't have to fucking post. Yeah. They don't want to post right now. Oh, well, we have to. And so we always opt not to. Yeah. And then like people are always like, you have to post every day to be successful on no, Instagram. You don't. And we're like, no, you fucking don't. Yeah. It's the last thing we ever do. We're yeah, just, yeah. like, literally, we just sort of like, sometimes we don't post for weeks on end okay. because it's just like, and then when you do post, hopefully it comes from that place. Make, yeah, it's authentic. You know? And people can feel it, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you're just kind of posting for the sake of posting, like yeah. what's coming from your heart is forced yeah. versus like if it's truly resonating with you and what you want to share and that message that day, people can feel that energy and they're like, they'll be pulled to it. And like, yeah. wow, thank you for sharing that. Like you'll see that kind of response. And that's yeah. also what it is. Mm -hmm. Instagram, it's supposed to be in the moment actually. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think the discontent comes with the planning because then it's no longer what was atmospherically mm -hmm. present. Oh my God. Right. And it's and, funny because I think about the idea of Instagram as well. And I like think about even to the the very beginning, like when I was starting my journey with you mm -hmm. in Montezuma, Montezuma <laughs> at the yoga teacher <laughs> training, like that didn't exist yet. Yeah. Like, didn't it? No. no I, I guess think it, it started to. Facebook was there. Yeah. yeah. Insta I think it was like the beginning of it. Like, and I remember thinking the beginning of Instagram. And it was, I think, in those days. Because I remember like I was doing the much music thing and stuff. And everyone was uh, like, okay. you need an Instagram account. I was like, no. Yeah. Like, pictures? Who yeah. wants to look at pictures? Uh -huh. I remember saying that to like some producer at the yeah. show. And I was just like, so it was like the start mm -hmm. where you were like still felt like you had a choice in yeah, a way. Yeah, but now we've mm -hmm. kind of been pulled into it. But, but using yeah. it for good, mm -hmm. there's a way to use it for good. Yeah. I think that's what's really important is like, if you're going to use social media, um, especially in the space that we all exist, it's like, mm -hmm. how do you use it to share and to like connect and to do things that are like of the light? Exactly. You know, rather yeah. than, I don't know. Instead of a... Or cat videos. Cat videos. I'm all <laughs> for that. Right? Puppies. Like puppy videos, right? Those are good too on social media. That's where it all began, I think. On YouTube with like cat videos? Yeah, the start of it. And then <laughs> well, the first that. video of YouTube was actually a guy standing in front of an elephant well, and was talking about this elephant. Like the very first video? Yeah. On YouTube ever? On YouTube, yeah. I was talking about it. Really? Yeah, no, I'll, the I'll very, look, like the, the beginning video of YouTube, like the oh. very first thing Oh, the posted. first person to ever do it. And it yeah. was an elephant? It was an elephant. I like... I had some hipster tell me this. Was it funny or cute or was it just like him standing next to an elephant? At least it was something about nature. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. But I, you know, it's funny because when I, I, I look back at those days and kind of what, what's connecting to me is that was, I was 22 years old. Maybe I can go back to how I came to the teacher training because it's all connected with the social media because I use the internet and the web. Yeah to search for something that I felt was kind of burning in my heart. I remember that night. Yeah. You literally were sitting, being like, I'm looking for teacher trainings. Yeah. Like for, online. For yoga. Yeah, it was, like, I was like, why? <laughs> no, there was no why. Well. I was like, good for you. Come on. There was. Don't tear that off no, me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no, I think that Oh, let's go there. You said we can't agree. <laughs> no, I, I know. That's what I mean. No, I wasn't supportive? No, you were supportive. In your no, memory bank of no, this? No, no, of course. No. <laughs> I, there was a mixture because I remember um, I wasn't well off at all. Like I was really struggling to pay rent. And mm -hmm. I remember that, like feeling that feeling in my heart, like there's just something that I was being pulled to with yoga. And I don't know why, because I was practicing yoga, but kind of just practicing the, the asana part of yoga. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, there was nothing in the spiritual connection for me. It was, maybe it was coming from a gymnastics background. It was like very linear. Okay, poses, alignment, breath, like that's it. Yeah. But it, something was 
kind of itching in me. And I was like, I want to go and learn more about yoga and go deeper into teacher training. And I used the web, the World Wide Web, to go. And I was like, teacher training. And I was like, well, where would I want to do it? Well, I really loved Costa Rica. At that point, we've only been there once before. Mm -hmm. I was like, I really, really love the energy of Costa Rica. Why not just go and immerse myself in like Costa Rica and I don't know, see what happens. And so like the first thing that came up, Anamaya. It's like, hmm, this is interesting. So I click on it and then I start reading about it. And then it was a retreat or a teacher training with you, Jackie mm -hmm. Cheeto. And I was like, who's this? <laughs> and I start reading about you and like just the whole platform and the curriculum and everything that was going to be included. And then and I scroll down, I look at the price and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> like at that time I was oh, like, to us, that was, a that was a lot of money. What was, yeah. Like back then, I don't know. What was and this it? This is back then. I think it back was too. Well, I started it, there 2011. It was, was the first year. And this right. was close to then. That right? was like, so I think 20, you were either, was it 2012? Uh, 2013. 2013. 2013. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And to yeah. us, like this was in the era of life and you know, you had go through these eras, but a thousand dollars, like yeah. for a plane ticket was like a lot of oh, money. Can we go? I don't like, yeah. so anything like you think above that when we would go to Costa Rica yeah. at that time, like that was when, you know, to stay at a place in Costa Rica was like 40 bucks for a night. Yeah. So going to Costa Rica was a, the only lift was the ticket. And I remember you showing the well, Jackie Cheeto everything's training. Everything's included, right? Food yeah. and lodging. And I was like, well, what's the cheapest room I could find? Okay. The one where you share with like three other people. So I was like, yeah. okay, this is where I'll go. And I still, I, I forget what it was. I think it was like 2,600 or 2,700. It was or, no. wasn't even that much compared to what, what it is even now. now. Yeah. But I remember I had to call my dad and I was like, dad, I'm like, can you, mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't know. And I can't explain it, but I just like, I really need your help. And my dad ended up actually lending me money and helping me and paying for me being able to go to Costa Rica. Um, and it was funny because I also had to convince my dad because by that by that point, I just completed doing this like personal training certification just because again, there was something in me searching for something mm -hmm. and the personal training, the physical you know, personal training, it was just so empty. Like, okay, I learned how to do certain reps and teach someone how to do alignment when they work out, you know, but I don't know. So it just wasn't fulfilling and clearly there is some kind of guidance mm -hmm that was guiding me to well, it. The, the first thing that you found. And it was the first thing. It was like, Anamai. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't even scroll down. I was like, boom, yeah. boom. It was just like, just clicking it. Like something subconsciously was being pulling pulled. me and you and all of these things aligning. And then walking into the training, I remember like, I think it was funny. I remember I arrived in Costa Rica and they lost my bags. So I arrived in Montezuma with nothing. Like I didn't have my suitcase with me. I had like my backpack and I'm like, no books, like none of those things you had to come prepared. And I'm like, wow, this is a first lesson of like detachment. The and jungle like, initiation started right? before you even arrived. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully my bags came like the second day, but I remember having to go and ask the students for like extra clothes because I had nothing and it was hot and I was just what I was wearing when I was on the plane. Um, and, you know, going into this experience, like, I think also going from like a linear gymnastics brain of everything I've experienced, I'm like, okay, I'm going to really dive in and learn all about yoga and the history and alignment and teaching and how I'm going to be a yoga teacher. And it was completely not what I expected at all. It was like I was thrown into this fire and you were like this guy that just showed up <laughs> and was like, I'm going to dig in there and I'm going to pull everything out of you and I'm going to change you like literally and I, I to this day anytime anyone ever asked me what was my first teacher training like and I was like I didn't even have a 200 hour teacher training as they call it to me it was like a spiritual awakening realignment um rebirthing yeah mm. because it was like it was hard Jackie like there were moments I remember we had to be in a circle and you would put um what was that artist not them car was that yes, name? Yeah. I know how to make people go there. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember it just bawling and, mm. and like shaking and feeling this trauma and things from my childhood and everything I suppressed for that so long from my gymnastics career, all of those things. And for the first time in my life, someone poked it mm. and it was like came out. And then all of these other things that you were connecting me with in terms of like the history, the mantras, the chanting, like that was so foreign to me. But as soon as that idea and seed was planted, everything just connected like so quickly. And I left that training, like I swear I, I left it as a different person. 
And so to this day, I'm always like, you are my first <laughs> yoga teacher, but you weren't even teaching me yoga. Like you took me through something completely different. But that is teaching yoga. It's almost like a shamanic journey. It was. Mm -hmm. It really, but really yoga was. Yoga is in, in sorts of shamanic path in a way. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's so powerful. And I think that's why it's so hard when people come to us now and ask, well, where should I go do my teacher training? Well, where you always answer with one name. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I've, I've always like, like, well, I like did Jackie my Chiodo. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, because then I, you know, I followed afterwards and the path and I did, you know, continue with my studies and I yeah. did a 300 hour in India and it was wonderful, but it was never the same. And I, I went into those trainings with that same, again, expectation that I was just, someone's going to walk in and take me even deeper, yeah. even deeper. And no, it wasn't the case, but I gained other things from, mm -hmm. you know, the other trainings and experiences, but, uh, well, maybe it's something to do with the idea that when you go to a yoga teacher training, it tends to give you what you're not expecting or not looking mm -hmm. for. Cause the first one for you was definitely not what you were expecting. No. And then the second one for you, <clears throat> when we were both in India, like we had this whole, like, based on your first experience, we both went in incredibly mm -hmm. naive about like, the oh, it's in India, it'll be even more powerful, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like thinking that yeah. that was like a, some kind of like yogic secret to travel to the other side of the mm -hmm. world and that's all it takes. Um, but it's something more important than that, I think. Like, and, and that's what's funny because yoga since then too, like, you know, now I bet if you type yoga teacher trainings in Costa Rica, it's it'll just be like, down like mm -hmm. you'll just get lists of like yeah. sponsored ads mm -hmm. not even just like the organic what rides to the now. top yeah. right because mm -hmm. the transformation of yoga from 2012 to 2022 yeah. it's it's insane yeah. it, what like how popularized and like fashionable in a lot of sides of social culture it's become mm -hmm. um and it's sad it's also wonderful because it's still a door for people to walk through, but it's at the same time, without the right guidance or opportunity, um, they have to find it themselves, like the truth I find, the truth of what that path is. But Jackie, you, yeah. after I left, and I love that every every teacher training, you call them tribes. Mm -hmm. and that's something I really loved how you referred to that. It wasn't just students, it was a tribe. You continued to do it like multiple times a year, mm -hmm. no? Yes. Did you f see similar experiences for people or is it always yeah. different? Yeah, it's, you know, it's interesting. There are, I'd say out of a group, because your group maybe was maybe like 30 people back then. Yeah, They're yeah. packing them in. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was a month long, mm -hmm. which is a short amount of time. You know, when we totally. think about 5,000 years of wisdom and trying to integrate it and you're not in real life, you're in a <laughs> yeah. bubble in the jungle where you're not cooking for yourself, you have no daily responsibilities. And we've talked about this before, is that I see people arrive and their lights are dim. Some people, their light is completely off. They're just mm -hmm. flat, right? Mm -hmm. The world has taken the best of them. And they're looking for something they don't quite know what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And yes, the end result is you get the certification and you go off and maybe you teach and share this, maybe you don't. Maybe you just went through your own experience. But on day one, and just in, like we did in your training, I would just ask people, it's like, why are you here? What is it that you're wanting to get from this? Mm -hmm. And some people, they do just want to learn the asana, right? They want to physically feel better. They want to go teach because that's what you do is go get a teacher training. Like you said, it's become like this fad. And I'd say at least half to maybe three quarters if they actually trust me like you did and mm -hmm. just say, okay, I'm going to trust. I have to go in that fire with you. Yeah and guide you. And every time I lead the group, I go through my own layers and process of connecting, healing, and awaking. You can't. That's the mm -hmm. authentic. It's one of the reasons to this day, having been teaching, the first teacher training I led in 2008. So it's been, wow. and I was doing three at a time, or three a year back yeah, then yeah, yeah. at Anamaya. Yeah. And now it's down to one or two a year. But it's been consistent. I've been doing this you know, basically nonstop for, since 2008. Wow. Not something I'd kind of do every now and then. But the rewarding part for me is, A, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist in that I want, there's a method to my madness, and to try to reproduce that method and hand it off to somebody mm -hmm. to teach for me, I, I don't think it'd work the same. I still am the one that teaches the whole curriculum and personally want to see people go through the process mm -hmm. and boiling that down, connect, heal, awaken. And that's exactly what we do, applying the teachings of yoga there are some that may go really deep mm -hmm. and have a very life-enhancing and transformative experience that then forever puts them on a different path, which yours clearly did. Yeah. There are others that might skim the surface, 
But I really believe that the people that are drawn to me specifically, because I haven't put myself out there in a big way in terms of social media and marketing. Mm -hmm. I had a home studio for many years that was sort of my central hub or the mothership. Mm -hmm. And of course, on my their platform. But people would just like you, they're like, I just looked, I saw your bio, something hit me and just pulled. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's yeah. the universe marketing, <laughs> my best marketing agent. And I get chills. I'm like, they'll find me. Yeah. As you guys know, it's like the people that need to study and learn the way that you teach, yeah. they're going to find you. Mm -hmm. And not to be haphazard where I just sit on a couch and wait for you know people to rain down on me. I'm not going that, that route. But there's a level of trust and faith, which I ask all of you to have mm -hmm. in me and the teachings and the practice and to trust that everything I'm putting my students through, I have gone through multiple times. So I'm not teaching from up here saying, oh, do this, you know, as yeah. my subordinates, mm -hmm. or which sometimes in the India vibe of yogis, because it's like know, the just, guru kind there's of There's a hierarchy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even back in the day, the teacher and the students called Guru Kul, it was one on one. And it was a journey. I mean, even the Heart of Yoga book that we use for your training. Krishnamacharya was an Ayurvedic practitioner, and he taught the student in front of them the yoga that they needed for them. Mm. And then we've become sort of this mass-produced, systemized, right, categories of yoga in the West. Mm -hmm. But it didn't start that way. And so my goal as a teacher, as a guide, is really to meet the student where they are. Even though you're all getting the same tools, right. you're all going to apply that process very differently. And I was just thinking on the way over here, I was thinking, man, it'd be great if Juliana took my training now, like to see the yes. difference just in my own growth as a wow. teacher. But also I was intense. I was tough on you guys. Like we would sit around in a circle and especially the chakras. Like I oh, knew yeah. I was throwing them in and going, this isn't just about flowers and chanting something oh my God. and colors. I still remember the this chakra. Is, you're going into your triggers. Yeah. And I would intentionally, in a safe space, mm -hmm. gently poke and prod. Like you said, just getting poked right in those dark areas. Yeah. But if you think of the great teachers, not just yogis, right? Joseph Campbell, where you stumble, there lies your treasure. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right? Rumi, the wound is where the light enters you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Carl Jung, the, you know, enlightenment is an imagining figures of light. It's about making the darkness conscious. Mm. Right? Heart of yoga, Krishnamacharya. Yoga is a process of bringing the unconscious to the light of conscious awareness. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, and even Einstein, you know, there's just so many of these great thinkers that are speaking to yoga yeah. and lived it in their own dharma. Mm -hmm. And so I just try to bring that all in. And so this, the chakras specifically for my own life and healing were where I was like, ding, 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 ding. And I was led through not quite the same type of process, but given these tools mm -hmm. that helped me to overcome a very damaged childhood, which modern therapy didn't touch it, being shifted around and shuffled and didn't touch it, it didn't heal it. And I knew early on that if I was going to make a difference in the world and if I was going to heal myself, it takes work, right? You have to get your hands dirty, right? You have to get into that grit mm -hmm. and say, I don't want to operate from this anymore. Mm -hmm. And so the chakra system specifically, because of those triggers and those beliefs that you learn about that are in each of these energy centers, playing out maybe physically in your body, your health, maybe they're being projected and sort of triggered in relationships, but wherever you go, there you are. It's going to follow you, mm -hmm. right? So we can get a certification. We can go through all the movements. We can have all these followers. But if we haven't done our healing, our students are going to feel that. Exactly. And I one of the that. biggest things with the teacher training and why I wouldn't farm out and bring a bunch of different teachers in, which so many do, and even to this day, which I totally could, is because I want to be part of that process. Mm -hmm. And there's something to be said when, with my expertise and ability to heal myself, but also all the students I've helped transform with these tools at their own will. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody's forced to do anything, as you know, and that's what certain people are going to get different things out of it. But there's something to be said to witness that, and it is like a rebirthing. Mm -hmm. And to see someone finally clear out all that they are not and get a glimpse of who they are and then what they could do with that, I don't think it's everybody's dharma in the world to be a yoga teacher. I think that if you're really serious about any connections, healing, awakening within your own life, just to like make it better, you'd take a, a program like this mm -hmm. because it's just it's life-enhancing on so many levels. But mm -hmm. it is tough. Oh, yeah. And so many times people through it, like halfway through the train, like, man, if this was on the syllabus and I really knew what I was in for, I never would have come. And I said, well, of course, because mm -hmm. we're always trying to shy away from the obstacles mm -hmm. or the challenges or the things that really make us shine a light onto the corners or pockets of our own darkness and suffering. Mm -hmm. But this is a path of liberation 
But you can't get to that liberation without going through that darkness, right? What brought you into that suffering in the first place? Yeah. And so I can see it even in sitting in groups and very empathic and tuning in. And these people would come in, some of the groups, and I don't know if this was in your training or not, but the introductory circle, like, oh, well, I'm a Reiki master, whatever master. Yeah. Yeah. And then the moment I ask them to hold up a mirror or do one of the tough exercises, they're out. Mm-hmm. Oh, I already healed that. I don't want to go back there. Oh, wow. I can't. And I'm like, but wait, if you've healed it, then you can sit right in front of it and praise it because it got you to where you, yeah. you are. I said, if you still have an emotional trigger, it's not healed. Mm-hmm. So bring that, invite it to the party. Let's talk with it. Let's, yeah. let's work through it so it doesn't have so much power over you. And that's what we would do in those satsangs and sometimes for hours. Oh and we would be hearing people's stories that they had never said out loud. And somebody's like, this is like group therapy. And I said, well, yoga is a tool of therapy. Mm-hmm. You know, yes, and so it's I think, psychology. It is. It's a There's science a, of the mind, after all. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And the whole goal of yoga is to get to the mind, right? And to, to be able to control this, we really have a, a greater sense of peace overall. Um, but you're also creating a safe space for people. Like when you're in these trainings, mm-hmm. why I think it was easier for someone to come into these satsangs, right? And be mm-hmm. with 30 strangers, like that you just met, mm-hmm. and be able to just sit there and open up the darkest secrets of their life. Mm-hmm. That's hard. So they have to feel safe. Mm -hmm. But when you know that everyone's there with a similar intention, yes, slightly different here and there, Mm -hmm. but they're still there for some sort of healing, then it creates that space of safety, Mm -hmm. which is important. Because otherwise, like, I would never be able to share something really dark with people that I just met. It just makes you feel very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But it's part of the process. And I love what you're saying about, like, part of be, becoming a good yoga teacher is actually going through the healing process yourself. Because if you haven't gone through it yourself, then how are you supposed to teach someone? You can't hold space for it for others. Exactly. You have to clean your room before you can fix the, fix yeah. the world, like fix yourself, yeah. and then you can affect the world. Like, and honestly, I think that's one of the big things missing in the yoga world mm-hmm. and a teacher training. On average, a teacher training, they might throw you a script, memorize this sequence, memorize this brand of yoga or this lineage, mm-hmm. do it my way, be a co- carbon copy of me, which you're going to learn the basics and alignment, and there's certain ways that I want it done. But at mm-hmm. the end, you all have to this day, you create your own, and you yeah. deliver that, that class based on your experience. Mm-hmm. So you, going back to that, too, this idea of experiencing it, and so the goal for every student that signs up for the program is really for them to apply all the teachings that they're learning to themselves. Yeah. That's authenticity. That's integrity to me. Mm-hmm. How do you know something works if you haven't directly experienced the power of it? You can read about it, right? There's all mm-hmm. these ways in which we can infer wisdom, and it's laid out in the sutras, but direct experience is not negotiable, mm-hmm. right? That direct experience is what gives you that moment of saying, and some people it might be rearranging their body so they don't feel pain anymore. And they're mm-hmm. like, whoa. That direct experience of anatomy and alignment, now I get why you keep correcting us every time you come around and you won't let us, you know, misalign, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Or maybe it's the breath work or it's the chakras and they didn't even realize they were, they were operating from an outdated conditioning from a childhood that may have been obviously traumatic. It might have been, they barely even noticed what happened mm-hmm. and yet they're still glitching on these certain things within their mind that are preventing them from living fully. Yeah. And so until we can really experience the power, but again, we can't do that if the guide isn't there yeah. to lead us through that, that fire, which mm-hmm. sometimes doesn't feel like a metaphor. It feels like you're actually in the fire, right? Of like, okay, let me burn off all that I'm not, but that's alchemy, right? What you come in as should be very different in mm-hmm. how you emerge. And I think for the average teacher training out there, again, this is all from students that have come to me over the years. They're like, but I didn't learn that. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn that. Mm -hmm. Well, what did you learn? I don't know. Did you even teach a class at the end? They're like, no. I'm like, well, what did you do for 200 hours? Mm -hmm. You know, just repeat and copy whatever the teacher told you to say, because that's not Mm -hmm. moving it through your own experience. Yeah, I have have so much to say about the modern teacher training and how it's turned. I like you said something earlier, use the actual phrase factory farming. I thought that was your phrase, by the way, because I was like, I think it was a joint effort, but I I think it it was your phrase. (laughs) We crystallized that together. But I I think what's really interesting, and I think for the sake of a lot of people watching this right now, we've gone very, like, obviously, we're seven layers down because Mm -hmm. we've had this conversation to some degree a few times. But what if we go back to the start for the for the sake of people watching this and talk about what just the basic function of what like what is a yoga teacher what is a yoga teacher mm-hmm. and what is their function 
like at a, at a philosophical level? Cause we've talked about like the process of becoming a yoga teacher, yeah. but what about the actual, like the why, like why the intention. and, and what, mm-hmm. is, and what is their job and, and what is their, like as a teacher, like I have a hard time calling myself and we talk about this a lot, mm-hmm. like a yoga teacher, yeah. because I feel like if you be, if you have to declare yourself a teacher of something, you need to be like the master. Like you, you understand it to such a way that you live and breathe it. So then you have mm-hmm. the permission to teach it. And I think to me, it's, it's almost a sense of like, I try my best to live a yogic life and I try to teach my experiences. And so I, I'm more of like a, sh- like I share yoga mm-hmm. with people and my a interpretation disciple of yoga. Yeah. We, mm-hmm. and we've actually come to a point where we're like, <laughs> I'm not a teacher. I'm a disciple of yoga. Yeah. yeah. And so with that, I teach what I've experienced, but I think mm-hmm. like just for people at home, like what's the job of a yoga teacher? Like if, if they have to walk through the fire and do all the healing and shed all the stuff and all this thing, yeah. like, but why do they have to do that? You know? Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because you really do take on so many roles. And I've seen this over the years of people from the confessions they've come to me with that they've never said out loud to their therapist of 40 years or their family members or their mm-hmm. husbands, but they feel safe there's rapport and they can tell I care because I'm invested in each little being waking up to their greatness by mm-hmm. the end. I take it they're like they're my children, really. Mm-hmm. And not that I'm their mother and superior, but to say, wow, I've been there. Trust me, we'll get through this. But the role then at the end, it's a sacred, I think, it's a very sacred duty that we are stepping into. Um, it's an obligation. It is a responsibility. Mm-hmm. And you can look at a couple different ways, right? We know yoga is a spiritual practice. Well, you're serving as someone's spiritual guide. There we go. That's a big deal, mm-hmm. right? I've had people renounce their religion and say, well, you're my spiritual guide and I want you to do my funeral ceremony and officiate my <laughs> wedding. And I'm going, okay, you know, <laughs> I've had therapists, masters or PhDs in therapies with thriving practices coming to me because I'm also a hypnotherapist. So working with that subconscious realm mm-hmm. coming to me and, and being triggered and being released under my guidance. And I'm going, well, you're the one with the degrees, right? right? Mm -hmm. So you might be their psychologist without saying you're that therapist, Mm -hmm. right? Within the realm of what you're trained in. But they come to you for the mental health. They come to you for the spiritual guidance. They're coming to you for the body, the pain, Mm -hmm. right? The misalignment Mm -hmm. or the ailment or the illness or disease or the imbalance Ayurvedically. I mean, there's Mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. And so I think, again, there's a lot of asana teachers out there that are doing just great. And we're in Austin, one of the meccas of, you know, (laughs) yoga teachers, a dime a dozen. And just like the jungle, right? There's so many things. But And that's great. I think some people, maybe it is their dharma just to move the physical body. Mm -hmm. But I think if we're going to call ourselves, and I'm not a fan of that either. Yoga teacher to me seems very limiting to what the capacity really is. You're a guide. You're really a guide for someone's life and well-being. Right. Because they're going to look to you. Like, you're a teacher or you're not a teacher. Yeah. It's something that that you, well, or you're a teacher and then you can basically teach anything or at least learn to teach it if you have experienced Mm -hmm. it because that's the same thing like you're a yoga teacher I mean I take a lot of yoga classes for example and you can really feel it when someone is teaching from the healed part of themselves or from the pain pain body if we want to bring in Eckhart Tolle uh, or from the pain part (laughs) and like you can feel it you don't really Mm -hmm. want want, it doesn't feel right Mm -hmm. you know so teaching indeed like you're a teacher that's something you have experience with so you can teach it like in a way, our parents are our first teachers. They might not be well equipped for it, or it depends on what kind of teaching you had from them. But it's a, I feel like it's a strong word, teacher. Well, it's, it's a huge word. It is, but it's also, to me, it doesn't quite have the capacity to say, because you're beyond just teaching them, right? You're guiding them into the depths of their, their own being. And you're holding a flashlight mm-hmm. into the parts they might not want to look at, they might be avoiding, they might think they already overcame, but they didn't. And I think there's the surface level of doing that, mm-hmm. which is the easy way, play the playlist, move them through a great sequence, they leave feeling something a little different. Oh, well, the DJ. Yeah, the DJ. <laughs> or the, yeah, the yeah exactly. DJ. That's, I'm like, they spend more time on the playlist mm. than the actual conscious sequencing. <laughs> okay. But you're also, I mean, you're dealing with people's nervous systems. They're looking to you as an authority, as yeah. someone they respect. I mean, that's a big, and I've, I've taught in very diverse communities. And whether it's after a political election, during a pandemic, I am very mindful to never, ever put my personal beliefs mm-hmm. onto people in the yoga classroom. 
because it's not mine to do so. Yoga is a path of self-responsibility. So we're really these guides giving people their power back to think for themselves, to decide for themselves, and then to trust that. Mm -hmm. Don't do and, and be as I'm saying, right? You can take my guidance and wisdom, mm -hmm. but I don't live inside of you all day, every day. So what works for me may not be a fit for you, yeah. right? And that's Ayurveda with all the doshas and you right. know the differences, even though we're all one. We're all very different expressions of that mm -hmm. one. And so I think teacher, you know, whether it's guide, it's, you know, I think more like, you know, like a nature guide, like, oh, I'm going to take you through the forest. Yeah. All of you are going to see and experience different things, but it's really, I'm just taking them back inside of themselves. Mm -hmm. well, I think it's also in the, the, in, I think there's also what you do and what you did with Juliana. I think that's a, a different platform and experience where it's a different relationship to, for instance, when you're in a classroom and people show up right at six o'clock and you wrap at like seven a drop and they in all class. leave, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I think that that's like an asana instructor, but you can also see it as like, maybe it can be a lot of time in today's age it would be an odd, like people see a lot because a lot of people show up being like, I'm just here to move. So that becomes an awesome instructor, but you have an opportunity as that awesome instructor to, to, to guide. To, well, yeah. And to and, get into the yeah. mind and emotion. So even in my group classes and we have the studio and even online, I always had an inquiry or what we call a contemplation, some sort of to get them thinking. Mm -hmm. Now they could just disregard totally. it. Or that might be something, and often it was carry them into the day the mm -hmm. door. and say, you know, whether it's kindness, okay, see how that's expressed today, mm -hmm. or, you know, saying no because you don't have it to give, whatever, but mm -hmm. giving them permission to go beyond just the movement and the form into really that deeper insight and connection. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that over time has been part of the people saying, oh God, I love what you say. Like the, the motion, motions are great, but we want to hear the message for the mm -hmm. day. We want the guidance. Yes. Like right. how do I go not you know, yell at somebody in traffic? How do I go yeah. practice patience with my children? Mm -hmm. How do I go off and deal with the boss I can't stand at work? It's truly That's helping yoga. them take yoga off the mat. Off That's the, mat. the exactly. whole idea, exactly. right? And, 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 it. and being the signpost or like a doorway mm -hmm. and not preaching like you're saying, like my way or the highway, this is how you need to be living your life. Yeah. This is the way. It's like, no, no, let's take the principles of yoga, self-connection, mm -hmm. self-inquiry. And how do you apply that? Yeah. As you finish your practice, you do your shavasana, you get up. How are you going to continue that energy? How are you going to stay with that forward. energy connection forward? And that's yeah. that's the true practice of yoga as well. well and, and I think yeah. we've struggled with that with videos. And we talk about it a lot. And that's why we love our premium programs. Because yeah. tr in a space, especially online, where like you have YouTube like video, 20 yeah. minutes or 15 minutes. Sometimes even less, like 10. Because some people are like, oh, I only have 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Yeah. And we love just find some yoga. And, and yeah. we love to be able yeah. to show them obviously the mind-body connection through yeah. asana, mm -hmm. but it's always our challenge being like, how do we figure out how to work in the mm -hmm. gold that they might yeah. find that they actually need? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that like, and show them that doorway that if they choose to take it in that 15 minutes, might make that connection mm -hmm. that then just like an aha moment that then you kind of get hooked on those. And that's what keeps bringing you back to yoga, like that mm -hmm. feeling, that intrinsic yeah. thing, right? And all of this yeah. makes me really feel like to go back to our discussion before of like, what is a yoga teacher when people are mm -hmm. wanting to embark upon that path of being that leader mm -hmm. for even just one class or mm -hmm. a community. Yeah. Um, it's really understanding like, well, how can I be that guidance? How can I actually embody that and push people through mm -hmm. that? And, and, and that's like a good parent, like you were saying, like yeah. a good parent, I don't think teaches. I think if you try to be a teacher as a parent, the child tends to, to be like, example, it's ideally. to lead by example. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even myself, I started yoga because I had whiplash from a car accident, oh 19 years old. So it was a physical doorway, not necessarily getting better shape. And that was way back when, when we had one yoga mat, it was the light blue one. Yes, I'm that old. There was one mat, mat option back. But my mom was a hippie in the 70s, and she had done yoga. I was like, oh, we don't want to go to yoga. Until physically I had an injury that I've always been independent with my healing in terms of I didn't want to go to a chiropractor three mm. times a week. I didn't want to be injected with drugs. I didn't want to be on a painkiller. And so I, the yoga was the first time. I remember on vacation with my family. Mom's like, let's go do yoga on the beach. We're like, okay. So we were teenagers. We were like, oh, yoga. You know, it wasn't as cool <laughs> as, as it is now. And I remember going through my first sun salutation and I felt my spine align and I can't even, it was just this moment of like, oh, I need to do this every day. 
Like I don't have to go to a doctor for it. I don't need mm. to see the chiropractor because I was having migraines. I mean, I literally at 19, I'd, I'd bend over and feel like my low back was going out because it was all in my cervical spine. And so it's very humbling to say, okay, well, let me stay with this as a physical therapy. But thank goodness I had a really good teacher that also brought in not as much philosophy as much, but you could tell she cared and she loved. It was just at a gym. But she had been doing it for a long time, and she was older and wiser than I was. And I stuck to it and kind of self-taught alignment in the mirror because I already had an injury. I didn't want to go into anything perfectionist. I'm like, I got to do it right. Mm -hmm. But then as a stressed out stockbroker in my 20s, I found myself gravitating to the yoga class at the end of the day. Just I literally would feel like I was just this wound up knot. And then I'd come out with that yoga high of like, whoa, like oh, completely yeah. unraveled. Oh, the yoga. And that was more of the mental, (laughs) emotional, just starting to seep in. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what is this? This is my therapy. This is amazing. And then it just, I mean, it just kept going deeper and taking me further. Each person goes through life and finds themselves at a point where they have to make a decision to do something or to succumb to the darkness. Mm -hmm. And and I think the more that... Mm -hmm. So it's by going deep down into that shit. Yeah. And I do believe that souls that are meant to bring light and healing don't necessarily have an easy route. Somewhere along the way, mm-hmm. yeah. and I see this even with yoga, I, I, I see very few people that get on the path of yoga, whether it's physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, because life is perfect, mm-hmm. right? Like injuries course, we talk about, like you're looking for something yeah. that will help you, but you don't quite know what you're looking for. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so fast forward in my early 20s, I thought, you know, I met this man and his family for the first time in my life, felt unconditional love, and we were engaged to be married, and I call off the wedding, like, a month before, because my soul was starting to say, no, this isn't, they've given you love and support and connection, but there's something we need you, there's something pulling me even beyond that, mm-hmm. comfort and security. And at the time, I was a stockbroker, thought, ooh, money will save everything and mm-hmm. heal my life and have the freedom, and no. Right. It just got me deeper into my yoga practice, which came from the injury, then the stress, and so forth. So fast forward through all of that, a couple of years ago, I had a Ayurvedic astrology reading and with a Vedic astrologer, and he didn't know anything about my past. So again, some things are karmically, I think, destined for us to, it's the challenge that our soul mm-hmm. came in to overcome. And he looks at my chart and he goes, oh my God. He goes, I don't think I've ever seen a chart quite like this. He goes, you were born into a really difficult planetary period. He goes, that most people don't survive. Wow. Hmm. And I said, oh, really? I go, what were those ages? (laughs) He goes, between five and 19, which is exactly when the trauma. Yeah. And I I barely did survive multiple times from whether neglect, abuse, abandonment, to all the other stuff. And I didn't become crazy in a mental hospital like my DNA could have predicted. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, I joke that I come from a genetic cesspool because so many people in my bloodline didn't live past 47, 48. They just didn't take care of themselves, whether mm-hmm. it's alcoholism, mental health stuff, whatever. And so I think knowing that in the back of my mind, I always was going the other direction to say, nope, I won't be the statistic. Mm-hmm. I think it's one of the reasons why I don't take even aspirin for anything. I mm-hmm. don't want chemicals in my body. Mm -hmm. I don't want anything that isn't within my control Mm -hmm. because I've taken it the long, hard way of chiseling away that stuff instead of just numbing it. Yeah. But that being said, if I had not lived through what I lived through and had to get myself through it, there is no way I'd be able to lead the type of programs that I lead in the way I lead them because I know that they're going to get through it. They might not, but I do. Mm -hmm. And then they trust me and there's that rapport. Mm -hmm. And so I think, again, it's like I I think of it like connect the dots, right? These little things that we experience, Mm -hmm. major pivoting points along the way that could completely take us out and Mm -hmm. destroy us or make us turn down that path of darkness. Mm -hmm. Or we can harness that and prove to ourselves what we're really made of. And if anything, I'm definitely resilient. (laughs) I'm like, if that's one word on my (laughs) tombstone is like resilient as fuck, right? It's like, like, (laughs) she still bounces back, right? But yeah, it's been a really interesting journey. But going forward, the residue was there. You know, from childhood, it would show up in my personal relationships. I'd get triggered Mm -hmm. and feel like I wasn't good enough and I wasn't worthy enough. And until I I got through the work that I did on myself with the chakras and then the hypno work and the subconscious stuff Mm -hmm. with Vipassana as well, to dig that stuff up 
and take out those old beliefs that I adopted as a child that I'm not safe, I'm not worthy, I'm not wanted, I'm not lovable. It seemed very basic. Yeah. But they take hold of people's lives and make such a mess of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, to this day, I see people in their 60s, 70s that have accomplished the material world right. and, they're and still, are still yeah. operating from that five-year-old self mm-hmm. that wasn't good enough, that had to people please, yeah. that had to put on a persona that wasn't them. And then trying to align with a functional relationship Right, it's going to show up in your mm-hmm. friendships, your workplace, your intimate mm-hmm. relationships, especially. Yeah. Right, when you start to define mm-hmm. what love is, a yeah. lot of times we'll start repeating those same, same thing, toxic, same. abusive patterns, mm-hmm. either to ourselves or in relationship with others. So you really yeah. had to rewrite all of that for exactly. yourself, exactly, which exactly. is very hard work, I'm sure. It is. It's a lifetime. Yeah, but it put me on the path to yeah. do this work because in helping amazing. others, and I know you guys can relate to this. As you're out helping others and it's not about you, Mm -hmm. your healing happens too. Exactly. If we're authentic and real and raw and And deep with it, without it being about me, you know? No, but you can feel it. And that's the thing. It's like why, what I felt when I was in your presence and having to be guided by you, like, and especially when you shared the story, it's just like it connected the dots. It's like, yes, Mm -hmm. because you know what that feels like. You can speak to it and you have been able to, pull yourself out of that dark night of yeah. the soul. You you saw the light. You were shown the light. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because that like that story still I'm like, like I get goosebumps. I know. I know. Because like that experience for you to to see this homeless man with piercing blue eyes who clearly was not of, an angel. of yeah, it was a total angel. It wasn't of this realm. Mm-hmm. Like did that spark or reconnect any like deeper spiritual connection for you like that was like a huge sign the choice to believe in something exactly greater than you the divine well he took that option away like there was never after that point no matter Mm -hmm. how hard my life got and it got hard and like Mm -hmm. harder like into adulthood that was never an option to not believe it to not take my life ah and his voice would come and his eye and it was just like nope you don't know why you're here yeah. You don't, you know, you have no idea. And it's like, even I remember the early years at Anamaya, I mean, cause I was still asking, why am I here? Why yeah. am I here? Had done so many trainings and certifications and had been teaching for a while, but I was still like, am I fulfilling my mission and purpose mm-hmm. and still doubting and questioning my own worth on some level? Cause yeah. some of that subconscious stuff still hadn't been fully healed, even though I was going through the layers. And I remember one incident and I can't remember what training it was, but it was early on, maybe 2012, 2013. And I remember walking down that driveway. It was pitch dark, but there was like this meteor shower. These stars were incredible. And I remember we'd just gotten through a really intense satsang. And there was a common theme. I don't remember one in your group, but I know there's always a common theme amongst the tribe. Like we start to hear our own healing Mm -hmm. through someone else's expression of their vulnerability. And this was like every group was... And this one, I think it was something around fathers. There were a lot of people that had lost their fathers early. Mm -hmm. And I think one had actually killed himself. So suicide came up. And Mm -hmm. so it kind of like, whoa, that was interesting, you know, connection from my own pain that I'd gone through. And I remember walking down the road and I just look up in the stars and I said, oh my God, I know why I'm here. Like there was just this moment of like, wow, holy shit, I had to go through all of this to reach, I don't care if it's one person and help switch it for them Mm -hmm. or to relate to 10 people or a thousand students. But this is, oh my God. And doing that work Mm -hmm. specifically in that type of group, in the uncomfortable Mm -hmm. jungle setting (laughs) that is amazing in paradise, but it also, the bugs get to you, the sweat, (laughs) it's not comfortable. And Costa Rica, I mean, you guys can relate to that. It's a karmic accelerator. It's like a healing vortex. It's a truth serum. The jungle will rip it out of you even if the training didn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. like you, yeah. Be careful where you do this stuff, right? Totally. India might be even better, but it's like so rich in saturated yeah. natures, like that truth serum. So that, that clicked and was like, wow. And then it was like little me. I, and I was so humbled to go, I'm being entrusted with this work, with these souls, with these vulnerable little children and adult bodies, you know, to heal and to give them the tools. I mean, I still feel that way. It's like, Wow. I mean, there's, again, there's a million options. If you're Mm -hmm. going to be a yoga teacher, just go through your healing and the ways that you can do it. Mm -hmm. But it works. I mean, I wouldn't be here if it didn't, but you have to apply it. You know, all these tools bring to life a power within you, but you've got to be willing to to navigate that. And it's not comfortable. And it certainly isn't easy. 
Well, it's there's the, the, art, the article of faith that it takes when it, the times are hard. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's really interesting to focus on. The idea, I mean, you, you said this in a different podcast, but looking back, the dots connect. Mm -hmm. But it's that faith that, to, that you have to have to find the strength to get through it. And whether it is to bring you to become a yoga teacher or to just work really hard to become the light. Be a better person. To mm -hmm. be a better person. Don't splatter your pain all over the place. And, and when, when you focus on being the light, the dots will always connect. Mm -hmm. And when you, no matter what you have to get through, no matter what, like, it, it doesn't matter. And I think this is so important to people out there that this discussion, if we take it away from becoming a yoga teacher or a healer or anything like that, and you just do good for goodness sake, yeah. to be a good person, because being a good person is a choice. Mm -hmm. We can all be a nothing person or a bad person or whatever it is. But if you focus on being like, I need to contribute in one way or another, that your truth will reveal itself down the line, mm -hmm. never in the moment, yeah. never when you're making those mm -hmm. decisions, yeah. but it's that faith that when you lock into it and just decide, I'm going to make a decision to stand the fuck up yeah. and to be Take more than I am now and to be responsible. And it's, it's not a very parents, difficult, not blame oh. your upbringing, none of it. Cause you, we live in a victim society. Yeah. We're in a victim culture. Yeah. Like literally everyone wants to blame everything else. And yeah. sure, everything else is there to blame, but it's a choice to say that's going to keep me here or I'm going to empower myself, stand up and become more than I am right now, no matter how fucking hard it feels. And I think that's so, so strong. And from a story like this, just to bring it to the principal nature, to say to people out there that if it is hard right now, if you don't know what you're going to be doing with the rest of your life, if you don't know what your purpose is, because it's so fucking hard to decide you have a purpose mm -hmm. and to just do something in anything that, that brings you joy, it brings that you joy. makes you feel good or brings someone else joy. Yes. Like, Service is it, it, it can be like, it can seem so futile, but I swear, I think all of us in this room can say that it's never been an easy journey for any of us. Um, Tommy, Robin, Heidi, all of us and everyone we meet, it's, no one has an easy journey. Mm -hmm. But when you get to that point of just having the faith to say, you know what, I'm going to just keep trying to be the light. Mm -hmm. In the end, it always makes sense. And I love this. I like, I'm so yeah. like lit up right now from mm -hmm. your story because it, it's another situation to hear, to like, to take that for myself when it's hard. Yeah. Cause it's never always easy. It's not like when you find your purpose, like we're doing oh, Boho Beautiful. No, it's it not gets, like we're like, oh, life's this fucking cinch now. We found our purpose. <laughs> the yeah. bar like, keeps getting raised. Yeah. I mean, the universe knows you're playing on its team and you're here to be like, oh yeah, how about this? Oh yeah, how about this? You're like, <laughs> okay, use me. How can I serve? And you're like, yeah. really? You want me to do that? Mm -hmm. Like, can I, you know? Yeah. But yeah, we don't know what we're made of until we step up. And I do think service is, at least for myself, it's been a huge it was safe to heal in the name of service and to guide because it wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it wasn't a motivation for money or fame or status. It was, how can I help? How can I serve? Yeah. Bring me the right people. And I'll just know yeah. that they're there. And they do. And they still come up. They're like, I have no idea how you found me or how I found you. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's it's exactly. Right I'm like, yeah. cause I'm hard to find or was, you know, and like one point my website went down. They're like, we didn't even know, but that's, I was just like, well, I can't find her. I may as well go meet her in person. Yeah. I'm like, well, here I am. Yeah. But it is, I think part of it is again, coming back, if we can make that connection to say, wow, we're not going to deny that we've had pain or darkness or mm -hmm. we're struggling, mm -hmm. but then we have to, what is it going to take for me to heal that? And am I willing to do that? Am mm -hmm. I willing to get uncomfortable? Am I willing to break down to breakthrough, so to speak, right? Yeah. Disentangle all that we've been told we are or are not and decide for ourselves what we want to become. And we yeah. don't have to have clarity of what our purpose is. That will be revealed, I think, yeah. in that process mm -hmm. of making those connections, yeah. then healing, then you awaken to the purpose, not mm -hmm. before. Right. Exactly. You know, and I think people sometimes, oh, I'm going to dive in. I see this a lot in the therapeutic world, just through clients that have come to me, that they went into therapy thinking that they would heal themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe... But you can't unless you're actually going through the process as well mm -hmm. through your own self mm -hmm. as you're in service with others, right? It's like that right. two-way street. Mm -hmm. It can't just be an outward act of giving. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. You have to take the time to give to yourself. Or running into the yoga training being like, I'm just going to become a yoga teacher and then yeah. I'll have a purpose. Yeah. And it's like, well, hang oh, on a I've second. Oh, and I make people squirm. They're like, I'm here to like master my back bend or whatever. I'm like, well, you came to the wrong training <laughs> because I'm going to teach you alignment, but I also want to teach you how to live yoga. So when you yeah. leave here, you're a better person. Mm -hmm. When you leave here you're kinder to yourself that negative narrative mm -hmm. is gone mm -hmm. that old voice has been extinguished right like 
it's a life. It's a lifestyle. That's the most important thing to always remember about being a yoga teacher or disciple of yoga. Or a yogi. Or yogi is yeah. how are we actually integrating this modern day life that we all live with these principles that we learn through these experiences of a yoga teacher training. Because it's one thing to be in a really safe environment with people that understand you, having beautiful, like amazing and they're speaking food. the same language. Yeah. speak the same language. You, you kind of vibrate in the same frequency. You're eating amazing organic food. You're in nature. Like everything is laid out on a beautiful schedule for you. It's great. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing. It's not thing. real life. <laughs> it's not real life because you, you take all that in and then, okay, you're done. Bye. Mm -hmm. You go right into your real life, which is filled with responsibilities and obstacles and mm -hmm. you got to pay your rent and you got to do your job. And you know what I mean? And it's like, well, wow, like that integration, that's the, where the real that's work. The work. Mm -hmm. And where's the follow through? Yeah. And that's why with this program that I'm launching and that we've spoken about is, is exactly that. We don't need to be in such a rush to get that piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Don't be in a rush with your own connecting, healing a process and awakening into that. It may be your purpose to go teach yoga. It might be your purpose to go do something else that you'll discover well, in this process. Totally. But it's still worthwhile. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to take that slow and steady bite-sized piece, as mm -hmm. I like to call it. So you're not getting this yogic indigestion of cramming 5,000 years within three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. Which, and I love this. So the three weeks to make or break a habit. Well, it's 90 days to create a lifestyle at wow. a minimum. Mm -hmm. And then we look at the cells of our brain and our body and programmed with new information, right? New beliefs takes at least a year. Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. So to think we're going to get, and again, the immersive environment, there's a sweetness about it because totally. you're in a bubble. Yeah. But it's not realistic unless you have the resources and the support to go home and every day, because, and I tell my students, I'm like, I won't be there mm -hmm. to tell you to not have the whole bottle of wine. Like practice the moderation, right? Because mm -hmm. we go abstinence when we're there in the training. I said, but then find your balance. Don't mm -hmm. eat the whole bag of potato chips, mm -hmm. maybe a handful, right? Like, but that's on you. Yeah. Are you going to take these teachings now? Yeah. And they oftentimes can if they don't have the support or their family and friends or people aren't in the the same vibration. Mm -hmm. So the idea with this course is to live that and to guide them step by step over the course of a year. So this is a teacher training that you're launching that's mm -hmm. actually going to go for an entire year. For an year. entire year. So I'll have some people start in October that mm -hmm. really want to go. And then some people start in December. And then there'll be an option to start in February. So they mm -hmm. can take it a little bit quicker if they want. Okay. And then it will end as a 10-day immersion to do the hands-on stuff like we've done in, in your immersion. And where teach. they teach a class. <laughs> yeah. They get the jungle. Yeah. It'll be at a different location that's a little more remote, but a little bit more luxurious at the same time. Right mm -hmm. on the beach, there's less interference of road noise and traffic and other outside energies. Because I think there is beauty in having the immersion, but you're not arriving as strangers in this case. Mm -hmm. You're going to come together already knowing each other through the yeah. online environment. So I don't think it's been done before, and I'm more of a trailblazer than a mm -hmm. follower. I so if it, it has, though. I don't know. But... I've never done it in this capacity before, but so far, everybody that's signed up so far is really, this is what I've been looking for. So they mm -hmm. get that guidance along the way. Mm -hmm. Here's a couple bits, right? Yeah. Go apply it. Now let's come together and talk about it. Yeah. Like, when did you react? How did you get triggered? In your workplace, in your family, right. right? Having to juggle being a mom and have a career and all the things, or a father, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the idea of real life application mm -hmm. of such a profound experience but stretched out, mm -hmm. so ideally it's absorbed on mm -hmm. a deeper level, but also applied so that when that training ends, there'll be more to continue with the 300-hour and so forth, yeah. but ideally it's stuck to where that new hab habit, that samskara, that groove, that imprint is the default now, mm -hmm. is to reach for the healthy, forward-moving thing, not the thing that's pulling you back yeah. into the past stuff. Mm -hmm. so. so how many times a week, like, so this is going to be done on Zoom, like the online portion? Well, and right? it's really, and this is the thing, I think part of the path is accountability, right? Mm -hmm. Self-responsibility, as well as flexibility and adaptability. I think those are really important things to remember mm -hmm. just as a yogi, but also yoga teacher. And so the time commitment will be one, like eight hour day a month, mm -hmm. which isn't, and it's on a weekend. All that will be recorded so if they can't make that live session, they'll tune in and I'll be able to watch their progress. So make mm -hmm. sure that they do fulfill it. Not that I need to be their accountability, but on the, their own with integrity. 
And then there'll be um, online class library meditations that they'll have access to. So if they want a daily practice, mm -hmm. they'll be able to tune into that Amazing. along the lines of what I'm teaching them with sequencing and alignment. But we'll cover all the philosophy, Ayurveda, chakras, but just stretched out in a little different mm -hmm. way. And then when we come together in Costa Rica next September, it's the hands-on refining assists and practicing with your partners, creating your full class, just mm -hmm. like you did in your training yeah. way back when. That hasn't changed. Because I think there's something to be said of people feeling empowered to bring all that I offer them and to piece it together in a way that's authentic to them mm -hmm. within the lines of sequencing and anatomy and so forth. But then bringing that insight or that mm -hmm. contemplation, that theme into that class and make it their own. Yeah. Because I don't think this is a cookie cutter, carbon copy system. I don't think it ever has been. I think, mm -hmm. unfortunately, yoga in the West, we've made it, this is the system or this is the style yeah. and nothing else counts. And I just, I don't believe that's true. But when we align ourselves with Ayurveda, these universal truths, the chakras, all the philosophy, and really living the eight limbs instead of just reading about it or, mm -hmm. you know. Um, my goal is that by the end of that year, people, much like your experience in four weeks, is like, yeah. wow. But now I can continue exactly. because I've been doing some of this yeah. out of my own household. But I also had the beauty of the immersive retreat, which we know we go so much deeper totally. when we don't yeah. have the world pulling at us, mm -hmm. and especially in the jungle. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, it's an entity of its own. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like my co-teacher. I'm like, oh, I can't do it without my co-teacher. That's like my assistant. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I'm excited and hopefully a Boho Beautiful will be leading us through a little meditation or something. Yes. Be a special guest. Mm -hmm. 100%. One way or I another. Mean, that's really cool to us because, yeah, you had offered um, after we'd last met in Costa Rica to have us mm -hmm. partake in, in some kind of capacity. Mm -hmm. um, and we've never been involved in any teacher trainings. And I think that we've had a lot of offers to get involved. Um, but most teacher trainings... It's like an A plus B equals diploma yeah. kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And I think to us and to many, many out there, like yoga, like when it comes down to the, the fundamental principle, yoga is just union and mm -hmm. finding the union in yourself mm -hmm. and then figuring out how to carry that union forward off of the mat. Yeah. And as Juliana stressed. Which is what you guys teach. It's what you live. Integration. I mean after the training it's, is so hard and when you when you just slam it all together and it's really much about like an angle like now what do i do with this yeah that was all great well, but i'm out of the bubble what happened interesting <laughs> you also mentioned union because something that i've really noticed and something that's been honestly bothering me a lot since this whole shift that's happened in our planet the pandemic is that we talk about yoga being union it's being all inclusiveness it's practicing mm -hmm. the idea that we are all one, like there's this oneness, universal oneness. And yet when this pandemic began, all I saw when I looked around, whether it's through friends who had personal experiences in physical yoga studios to events and, and so forth. To families. To families, to friends. Friends, to social division. circles. It was division. Yeah. And it was like, oh, well, you want to partake in yoga? Well, you can't because... You didn't partake in a specific medical procedure. So you cannot come into the studio. It was discrimination. And connect yeah. with yourself. And that was like, wait, sorry, in the yoga space? Like, I get it somewhere else. Sure, there's a lot of division happening in the world. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. It was heartbreaking, though, in the to yoga, see it in the yeah, yoga community. Yeah, in the yoga community. And to see other yogis go against each other based on their own personal views. Like, that was like a real heartbreak for me to see and to witness well and that's what i when i referred to earlier you know what does it take to be a yoga teacher there's a it's a very sacred responsibility and these mm -hmm. people are going to take your word yeah as like the word right if they're looking up to you and bowing down and not that i ever encourage human worship of any form but mm -hmm. they will they naturally see you as a guide and they're seeking mm -hmm. and they want that and to me, I just really, I was heartbroken because I thought, wow, now you're telling these people what they should or shouldn't do. And that's not your job as yeah. a yoga teacher ever. That's so smart. It's to spark an awareness within them that they instantly know what they need to do for themselves. Mm. To read your intuition. I don't want you to do my what I need to do for me. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel so 100% certain and clear on your self-knowing mm -hmm. that you know exactly what to do or not do. Mm -hmm. And that's what I kept teaching to just the middle of saying, it doesn't matter. Don't even, and nobody really, and this is funny. Nobody ever directly asked me what I did or didn't do. 
mm -hmm. right, in the name of all this pandemic. And at that day, I would have been very honest, but I wasn't going to give out information. That was really mm -hmm. nobody's business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's totally. between me and the divine. And oh, by the way, I'm not going to give you an insight to do something or not do something that could harm so. you. Yeah. Well, then I'm karmically responsible. Mm -hmm. There's a ripple effect. And here. everyone wants the answer, right? Mm -hmm. They want to know what to do. Like, what did you do? That's why people ask. So, so that I they... tell them to sit and meditate and ask their divine connection exactly. and say, you sit with it and whatever you decide to do, let it be a hundred percent. Because I think for some people, they needed to go do something. Others, it would have been the death of them had they done that. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't up for me to tell them, mm -hmm. nor did I want that responsibility. Yeah. It's like an initiation in sovereignty, right? Yeah, That's what it is eventually. Like I was working at this studio and I love this studio. It's where I took my first yoga class. I've been teaching in it for, for a long time. And I remember like I couldn't teach at a certain point. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. You, you couldn't like... I was not allowed to teach yeah. because of the policies at that time. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, um, well, I guess I won't be teaching here anymore because that's my own place yeah. here. So at that time I was like, okay, I have so much love for this studio that it kind of doesn't get personal. I do feel that when we are in this place where the world is looking for union, that there's going to be more separation. It's for us to see it. Yeah. But not buy into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're going to be in this duality, okay, let's just really look at it. What is yeah. that? And I may not like, it's with opinions, right? I may not like it, but, but does you, that really change my love for... Yeah. But can I understand it? This is why I keep encouraging people to say, you don't have to agree, mm -hmm. but can you understand? There's a big difference. And I think sometimes we confuse, if I understand you, it means I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't. I even ran this by a therapist once. I go, wait a minute, am I, am I wrong? She goes, no. But we really, and I think that's what we have to start understanding that, again, based on our, our life experience, our conditioning, it's all very individual and unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how dare I think I have the answers for everybody based on my limited viewpoint of mm -hmm. life experience. And we talked about this that first time around. Can we meet in the middle? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yoga is not a path of choosing a side. It never has been. And that's what was the big rude awakening of totally. like... Oh my, we were already a little divided by like, what kind of yoga do you do? I'm like, oh God, <laughs> if I hear that one more time, you know, I'm like, is there, you know, a big from this, that is like, whatever, like, does it matter? I just yeah. do yoga or I yoga. practice yoga. But you I know, think the that's labels. the big, you know, it's these, these extremes <laughs> yeah. and that's the duality, right? And the whole goal of yoga is to rise above that. Can mm -hmm. we live in equanimity? Can we observe mm -hmm. what's really going on instead of projecting Totally. our bias onto it because yoga teachers are great at doing that mm -hmm. project their bias and onto and I, I i like that it's finding the union right mm -hmm. going in that's the yoga which is in the middle in, mm -hmm. in the space yeah. of duality yeah. in a place where everyone wants to divide us and finding your sovereignty to say no i'm gonna find my my space in this mm -hmm. but understand why other people choose other things and yeah. be at peace with that and respect it and respect, and respect it. both sides but that comes you know. with right that self-knowing so if yeah. you are sure of what you think believe and know what's right or wrong for you you will not be so likely to impose that truth on mm -hmm. others because you don't have to mm -hmm. right your life is proof of that you're yeah. an example of those beliefs mm -hmm. and what you stand for without being belligerent or righteous or harmful mm -hmm. i think there was a lot of harm in the yoga commercial community, a lot of a non-ahimsa happening, yeah. right, with all of that. And I was shocked. And one of my good friends who didn't buy into this, he's very well known in the kirtan world, he's like, yoga is the path of the rebel. I'm like, you're right. He goes, it's not a path of conformity. Mm -hmm. It's not a path of letting other people tell you what to do, when to do it. But for you to have cultivated that self-knowing, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is not negotiable. So another thing we instill, right, in this, this, this training program is like, how do you get to know yourself if you haven't been in there <laughs> and really looked, well, right, and, and, and seen where you've been and processed that and, and digested it? And, and the rebel, I think that's, a, that's such a beautiful way to put it because I think also the rebel gets confused with always going against. Nope. But the rebel is actually having the sovereignty you're to rebel stand for your the truth. Light. Yeah, and your to, sovereignty, yep, to, and, and your to self hold knowing. that truth. And then to, I think, in, in the yogic rebel, it's to understand other people's truth, allow them their space for it, have empathy when, when it's necessary, and, but to find the deep respect between mm -hmm. the two yeah, and, to, sure. and, to, and to meet it with kindness no matter what their truth is too. And I think that's a big part about why this podcast exists now. Yeah, We, we wanted to create a space where we can have these conversations and 
and hear everybody's perspectives and yeah. sides. And, and it's really, like you're saying, it's up to us to come to our own conclusion in our heart of what mm-hmm. resonates the most for us. That's up to and us. And to trust it. Mm-hmm. And to trust it. And I exactly. think that's why, like, when it comes to the rebel, like, I'm so attracted to the rebel. Like, yeah. <laughs> I know. I, that's like my archetype. Like, if I have one, I'm like, rebel, sure. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. I still listen to Rage Against the Machine, <laughs> even though they <laughs> demanded a paperwork to get into their shows yeah, right. and it broke my heart. <laughs> yeah. I was just like, how, what? Oh, like the last kind of band you'd ever imagine. Right? Yeah. And that was okay. So, and I, yeah. and I, you said, I, I they said, want to get paid. You yeah, know, I guess. I don't know what it was, but I was like, well, we got tickets, but we're not going to go now. Yeah. And that's okay, but like because the rebel archetype to me, it's like to under to to find that space in yoga union. Because so many times the rebel thinks I just have to be against the establishment or yeah. against the narrative, and again that creates this division where like mm-hmm. the right and left now are the the establishment narrative or the anti-establishment narrative, and they think that oh I'm a part of team still B. Narrative. Yeah. It's still you're still dividing. Mm-hmm. But the rebel, I think, stands in the middle of that and holds their space to understand that to be the rebel is just to be to be noble. To find well, you're di- you're divinely rebellious. You're taking your higher chakra knowledge and awareness and connection to whatever your divine connection is, God, universe, whatever. Taking that above and beyond what's happening at that root chakra level of humanity, mm-hmm. because there's always going to be the duality down here. It's part of what we signed up for in this physical universe. But going back to like my childhood, there was always this strong connection. I didn't know what it was, mm-hmm. yeah. but there was never the strong connection with the roots. Mm-hmm. So I never got pulled under. Mm-hmm. As babies, we come in with that soft spot. That's your crown chakra. Your hmm. Children are still connected. They know their past mm-hmm. lives before they start speaking. Mm-hmm. That's why they have imaginary friends and they'll say the strangest things. And yeah. it's, I think that's more truthful than adults in most of what they say. Right. So as long as we're following the the human rhetoric or the narrative, there's always going to be this push to choose right from wrong, good from bad, right? The yin and the yang. But that's part of the rebel, right? Being the rebel is like, no, I'm going to stay connected to this beyond whatever proof or whatever shows up in that human realm is you're choosing to stay connected to more of that divine conversation and intuition and narrative Mm -hmm. to guide you Mm -hmm. every single day, even through a pandemic. And, and to pay the price when you have to. Yeah. And to be with the crowd when it calls yep. for that too. And yep. and to know that in that, oh my God, we're going to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. the, the, to translate what that means mm-hmm. and to be imperfect mm-hmm. is part of that. And then to recognize that imperfection yeah. with the rebellious nature and be like, well, I didn't make the right choice there, but to learn from it. Yeah. And, to grow and the from more it. you're tuned in, there might still be static, right? Every now and then you're still in a human body. So you have an ego and you've got all this stuff coming at you, but to choose that inspiration over the information, but also to stay more tuned in. I feel like the stronger you are in that tuned in channel of divine frequency, the easier it is to tune all the noise out. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you're oblivious. It doesn't mean you're naive. I've been called all, you're just not, I'm like, really? I know there's stuff happening in the world. What can I personally do about that today? I can't make myself sick enough, tired enough, anxious Mm -hmm. enough to fix it. Mm -hmm. But what I can do is get even more clear Mm -hmm. as to the work I need to do and how I need to write myself to be part of the solution going forward and not keep regurgitating the problem, the problem, the problem. I'm a big fan of Einstein and he, he's such a yogi, but he said, for those who believe (laughs) no proof is necessary. Our beliefs are the proof. They're proved by the way we live our life. Mm -hmm. Are we happy? Are we not? Are we at peace? Are we anxious? Those who don't believe, whatever the belief is, no proof is possible. Mm -hmm. So whatever you think you're right, Henry Ford, I mean, all these great thinkers of like, you can be given all the information on one side of something. If that resonates as a truth, no one will be able to talk you out of it. If you take that as a belief, it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It's Mm -hmm. what you believe, right? Mm -hmm. You activate that rightness or wrongness. Mm. But the other side of that could be true. So I felt like too, there was a lot of, Um, And even Joseph, we talked about earlier, he would tell me, he's like, well, you have this platform. You should tell your students, like, this is what they need to do. And I said, oh, honey, I don't want to be told what to do. I said, even in the name of yoga and people looking to me for guidance, I know what I'm meant to guide them in. And I know what is not my business. I said, I'm meant to guide them so deeply inside themselves and to listen and to tune in Mm -hmm. to where they know the exact answer and the right Mm -hmm. moment and they act accordingly. And it might be completely different from what I need to do. Mm-hmm. I said, but that's the liberty, that's the right, that's freedom. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, cause he just, he knew certain things and facts and whatever. And I said, look, I'm not gonna instill fear. I'm not gonna buy into one side or the other. I'm gonna remain neutral because that's I am awesome. not karmically going to tie my 
energies and voice to someone else's actions. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big mistake because they could go take my advice and it could mm -hmm. harm them or they could not take my advice mm -hmm. and it could harm them. Either way, yeah. I just want to give them the guidance to trust what they feel to be true for them. And that's exactly. so important to know when to speak and when not to speak. And mm -hmm. I think that there's a big fear there. It was kind of an initiation. I loved what you said there to get more clear on your values. What do I stand for? And that's maybe then the new rebel where it's not against yeah. something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, like, when to speak, when to say something, because I have that too, like, I don't want to install any fear in another human being. Especially you're not there to do that, yeah. right? As a yoga teacher, as a yeah. guide, you're there to bring the light. Yeah. And when we're living in a world where, where the light is becoming more dim and there's so much fear and anxiety and all of these things coming at us everywhere we look, mm -hmm. it's like, it's our job to actually be those guides for people to seek when they just want the light mm -hmm. they just want to be reconnected mm -hmm. like help me reconnect to myself i'm trembling with fear with all of these things being thrown from you know social media and the it's mainstream media it's overwhelming and yeah if we just consume ourselves with just that it's going to drain our energy it's going to mm -hmm. bring our vibration mm -hmm. down so it's like so really we're more like mm -hmm. electricians we're helping people yeah. wire yeah. Their, <laughs> so their totally. light can shine brighter we're yeah. changing the light bulbs wow <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it's funny in a time of like in an er, era where the pandemic is actually fear, um, mm -hmm. the strength is found inside. And I think that's what yoga has helped us with because 100%, yeah. like the pandemic was terrifying for the first few months and we had to go inside to mm -hmm. find our strength, to, to figure out how to make sense of it all and then how to behave how we want it to. And to also know when we needed to remove certain things. Like we stopped watching the oh, news yeah. or just reading can't. the news. Yeah. We just can't. And you know that because you can be so self-aware to understand that is making me feel toxic. Toxic. Well, the intention of yeah. the news throughout the entire pandemic was just well, to create fear. Well, in exactly. it, well it always has been. I mean, in it, right? pandemic or not, mm -hmm. I mean, it's you just hear the drone and you know how the subconscious mind works. If you repeat something and you hear it over and over and over, that deeper belief clings onto it as mm -hmm. its truth. And nothing can come to light after that and change it. Mm -hmm. And that's the scary thing, is you realize how susceptible and vulnerable our minds are. And if people don't have their own strength and fortitude to yeah. protect the mind and think for themselves and feel for themselves. And like you mentioned, it, that pandemic brought everybody inward and that inner journey either drove them to madness yeah. mm -hmm. or it made them wake up. Mm -hmm. It was like I kept seeing this visual throughout the pandemic. Some of us got pulled up. Everybody and not everybody, others got sucked down, mm -hmm. but there wasn't any of this in limbo. Like, well, I don't know. It was like, no, <laughs> yeah. there was a, a, a very big divide very drastic, yeah. of, and, and it was just it, energetically, I think it was definitely a karmic, it could have been a soul upgrade mm -hmm. or a downgrade, mm -hmm. depending on how we navigated through mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. that's so interesting. It, it's, it was an opportunity and, a, and again, a choice, yeah. like a very dark time where mm -hmm. we all had a choice. And I know at times, like, it was very difficult for us. Yeah, it, was. it was. Like, I, I, I mean, it's never easy. Uh, nothing. But then they throw that into the mix. And, you know, you have an entire narrative that's literally there to just mm -hmm. invoke fear. Like, nobody talked about health yeah. or how, like, yeah. it was a health immune, problem. How do you build your immune system? Yeah, no. <laughs> it, stress isn't going to help. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like, they just yeah. wanted to raise stress. Like, it was, you know, you see those, like, Project Veritas videos where CNN talked about it was all about keeping the number of death on the screen. Mm -hmm. Like, we are in a cult. Oh, how many survived? Yeah. yeah. Or, or hey, yeah, maybe recovered? during yeah. a pandemic where it's about the immune system, maybe the bottom of the screen, it should have just been, like, pounding in. This is what you can do to help exactly. your immune system. But like, that would mean we're moving towards solutions, mm -hmm. which are our world as we know and the media and the sources that be are going to be so hyper focused on the problem because that's what drives people yeah into the fear mm -hmm. right and a solution would be optimistic and hopeful right. and forward moving mm -hmm. you can't control the masses if they're not sick and tired and fearful so do we think it's about control i think if we don't have some sort of control of our own minds then we will naturally be led by others that will eagerly grab hold of control. And yeah. whatever that agenda is, is up for interpretation. Yeah, yeah. But we either control our mind or the world will do it for us. So it's power. Yeah, and we, and I like thinking about it in a very simple, like I always yeah. need to bring things to simplicity and, and to think about it as a, it is a power struggle and you give your power away yeah. or you maintain it and nurture it and grow it and, and allow it to elevate you mm -hmm. to a higher consciousness. Well, and really the path of yoga, Swami Rama said, you know, the path of yoga is really the path of self-knowing. 
Mm -hmm. And as you deepen that cultivation mm -hmm. of self-knowing who you are, again, where you've been, you've connected the dots, the pain, the trauma, the darkness, you've hopefully flushed it away and cleared it and healed, then you can awaken that self-knowing and say, okay, this is who I am. This is what motivates me. This is what inspires me. This is what moves me, whatever it might be. But he said in that self-knowing, then everything else can be understood. Right. But I think so often we're looking at the outside in, like we're trying to arrange the world and make it better before mm -hmm. we can feel better. Mm. And we talked about the victim mentality. Yeah. The victim always needs a perpetrator. Mm. The vi victim always needs to blame someone. The victim's not going inward and saying, oh, what do I keep doing? That yeah. keeps attracting this. Not to blame themselves, but why do I keep perpetuating or repeating this suffering or mm -hmm. this struggle? At some point, we have to be able to take the responsibility mm -hmm. and to really say, okay, I know who I am. I know where I've been. I, here's an idea of where I am right now. This is the next step that I want to take. And I think that's difficult for so many people, especially if they've never been told that that's an option mm -hmm. or taught how to do it or given the right tools. And again, if we plug ourselves into the voices out in the world and we're guided by our television or that narrative every day, mm -hmm. it would drive you yeah. mad. Oh my goodness. I, mean, I couldn't sleep if I was putting that in. So I used to joke during the pandemic too. And I said, you know, a little bit of information is fine, right? Then you can decide and go, okay, mm -hmm. what do I need to do and prepare or whatever. I said, but you know, just like junk food is toxic. Right? Mm -hmm. You might go to, not that I would ever go to McDonald's, but just as an example, you might drive through McDonald's so you have fast food once a month or something, or you eat the pizza or you, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. and indulge in something that's not good for you. I said, that's very different than going every day for every meal. Mm -hmm. I said, you can listen to the headlines or better, better yet read them because they have less of an impression on your subconscious mind, the way it holds on and is controlled. And then you know, okay, this is what's happening in the world. Great. Maybe I send a prayer, I do it a meditation, or I'm just going to go be a good, kind human today to put somebody's smile on a face because I know mm. the world out there is crazy. That's very different than the IV of ingesting this <laughs> all day, every day. And people do it. That news channel is on 24-7. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, they feel like it's a lifeline. If they were to unplug it, mm -hmm. they're, oh, I won't know what happening. to think, do, yeah. or fear today. And so I, I mm -hmm. challenge my students all the time, like, get rid of your television. Yeah. I said, watch something that you consciously know to entertain you if you need to. Mm -hmm. But the news, you're never going to find good news. You're never going to hear it's safe to leave your house. It's safe to not fear. I'm like, fear is a big motivator. Mm -hmm. And you either let it take mm -hmm. hold of you. It's like a virus itself. It is. Yeah. And, or you don't, or you choose to opt out. I go, just like it's a choice. Do you take McDonald's as your meal every day? Or yeah. do you eat something healthy? That's choice. Mm -hmm. But I think we forget that everything we bring into our system is nourishing or toxic. It's not just what we're eating, yeah. right? It's the Your conversations thoughts, we're that's having. The most, it's thoughts. Thoughts. Like in Montezuma, it's there's what a you're place. To. <laughs> yeah, there's a place with a TV, and there's just painted on it. You create your yeah. own reality. I wish I could gift that to everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's like just you don't need that. You don't need your television telling you how to live today. For people, it must be really hard because we're meditators. We have a yoga practice, but imagine you're in this pandemic, yeah. and you don't have that, thank God there is the internet and you guys were on that, but it was one of the first mm -hmm. things they took away. Yeah. Like you cannot even go to the yoga studio and then imagine like people who have- Or the gym or anything yeah, that was anything healthy. Anything that was healthy was yeah. not available. Because like, I was in Florida, they weren't letting people go on the beach. I'm or, the, like, or the parks. Are you? I mean, that's gonna heal people. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember there was um, the thing that really was like, what? There was this beautiful old growth forest. in oh, Cathedral Grove. Grove. Cathedral Grove. And it's like mm. these ancient like, like thousand year old trees, like incredible. And it's literally a forest with a path through it. And we were driving through once. And well, we, we, were, had, we were so excited to go there. Yeah, we're like, okay, you know, everything's shut down. Let's go into the nature and like mm -hmm. hug some trees, you know, like just really reconnect. And we got there and it was like shut down. And it was a like close because of COVID. We're like, how, it's nature. <laughs> how is there COVID in the forest? The virus right now? isn't hanging off the leaves of the tree. Exactly. Yeah. Like, what, you know, and it just like it totally glitched our complete sense of yeah. reality it's like how how are we even able to logically convince people that if they go into nature and they go and touch a tree they have a risk of contacting a respiratory virus well and how? and it, context is key too because this wasn't like early covid like i think they kept that place closed yeah. well canadians you know i mean canada's insane canada was throughout. insane yeah. throughout it yeah. but it was like literally like i think until i don't know like just before the summer it was it, but you like, mentioned earlier control control mm -hmm. because they could mm -hmm. i don't know that they'll be able to pull that off again you'd be surprised worldwide worldwide yeah. Yeah. i like to hear that 
<laughs> you yeah. give me hope. Yeah. That's well, well, I mean, think about it because there's so many people that just didn't succumb. Yeah. I mean, at that point we had to, but I just, you know, I thought about that a while back and thought, I wonder if this, this will happen again in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, chances are that, that it'll be a little tougher to pull off mm -hmm. next time if there is a next time. Let's hope yeah, not. Yeah. Hope not. No, I like what you said, though, about it's either something like it's nurturing or it's toxic. Yeah, nourishing or toxic. Nourishing yeah. or Anything toxic. we bring through the senses, not mm -hmm. just what we're eating. And I think that's like, that's a really important thing. What are you thing. listening to? What are you talking about? Mm. What are you smelling? What Who are you are drinking? Your you know, friends? Toxic, polluted air. Like, yeah. like friends is such a huge mm. thing, yeah, too. Yeah, your environment. You become like, who you hang around. Right? Your environment has a greater power over mm -hmm. you than your own willpower. It's so important. Which is... It's like everything around us, being the beings we are, create who we are, how we feel and how we see the world. Yeah. And so, and we all have a choice and we control these things. And mm -hmm. so like the toxic things that we partake and engage with and the things that we give our power and our energy towards, like every choice, every single one of those is a choice of who we are. It all adds up. And it adds up. And it's like, I don't know, you talk about this sometimes, like who are the last five people that texted you on your phone mm -hmm. and are they feeding mm -hmm. your fire or are they taking yeah, from it? I love that. And I think yeah. that's so, so yeah. important to think about that because, mm -hmm. you you know, after a while of us like kind of cleaning our life, you know, I, you know, people were like, you're five friends. I'm like, I don't really text anyone. I, you know, I try to, and I was like, parents. I guess I spend the most time <laughs> listening to like Alan Watts and Ram Dass yeah. and I don't know, like maybe Joe Rogan podcast. I was yeah. like, I, I guess those are the people I'm giving my energy to. Yeah. And what am I getting out of that? And how is that creating who I become? And knowing that. Yeah, knowing those minutes and yeah, sure, I wasn't talking to them, but I was letting their energy feed my fire yeah. and it helped me like shape a lot of like, especially through the pandemic, because, you know, if we called certain people in our life, they'd just fill us with more fear. Yeah. So we pulled in really tight, the mm -hmm. two of us, you know, we spent a lot of time with our dog yeah. and we tried to be like, how the fuck are we going to cope with all this? Yeah. And we slowly found our way onto our mats and to figure out how to hold our space so we could make sense of it. Mm -hmm. And I think outside of the pandemic, you take that and you put that to anything in life you're dealing with again, like. I always want to go back to this like principle that like can be applied and in, in the struggles of being a human because every day we struggle every day yeah. because every day we have an infinite amount of choices of where to put our power. Okay. And so the more we empower ourselves to say, no, no, I'm in control. Like that addiction to fear and news, like we, and we have to like trick ourselves. We have to take swiping left off our phone mm -hmm. to stop reading headlines on the news because they yeah. Build your phone so that you're just getting these headlines from all the oh, top reputable do, I, news sources. That's the first sources. thing I take off. It's I get crazy. Phone, I'm like, delete that app. I don't need to know. It's right. It's insane. <laughs> oh, I even forgot this existed. Yeah. 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 Right like, there when you wake up, that's also like this hygiene. We Somehow we don't really know yet how to deal with technology or there's no education around this. No education. This, but like to pick up our phone first thing in the morning... That's not really a good idea, even if you have lovely friends in it. Mm -hmm. Well, it just sucks you into that. Mm -hmm. Or or the people that have these like boxes that like talk to you and that you can talk to in your home. And I know I sound like an old person saying this. Um, Alexa? Alexa. Oh, yeah. oh my God. And when Alexa is like, good morning, and they give you the news, or no, first they give you the weather. And I guess that's okay, but still, we don't really You're need to robot. know the weather. And then all of a sudden the robot tells you the headlines. Like while you're lying in bed. I remember it was oh Mark's gosh. sister was telling us about her Alexa at home. And she was like, yeah, you know, I have an Alexa at home. And first thing I do is I wake up and I say, Alexa, what's the weather and what's the latest news? And this was during the pandemic. Oh and goodness. Alexa was like, well, it is minus 10 Celsius outside and X amount of cases of COVID. And, da -da 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 -da. and just like, and that's how you start. And that's you starting your day like fear, fear. Just okay. And of course, like, you know, Mark's sister, like Christy, like she lived in a, she lives in a very kind of fearful state in Toronto downtown Toronto was a very very yeah. fearful area of the yeah. world to live in during the pandemic and it's interesting to see like when we live in that kind of mental state how that actually physically impacts oh, our yeah. body as well and right? emotionally emotionally but physically like how many times like I mean in Ayurveda like, they talk mm. about that right mm. like, everything is so connected not yeah. just like obviously the food that you consume but even the thoughts and how that energy can physically manifest mm -hmm. in your body well, like because we are everything, yeah. we are all that we put in and we're all that we associate with. And, and the balance, the true health that you like to find true, like balance and health is such an attunement for each of us individually. But the first thing you have to do is recognize like, what are the toxic things coming in from mm -hmm. 
news headlines or food or friendships mm-hmm. and relationships or conversation or just yeah. like or just like the tea like the tv you watch you yeah. know like the weird like like the reality shows and all these kinds of things and it's hard because it's all so easy and it tastes so good and it's so entertaining and like as humans we're just like we're sucked to it and there's this force that says like like consume me and then like well, but if you choose it, like you may have indigestion afterwards <laughs> yeah, yeah right? but if you choose it you can also therapeutically watch it yeah. Like, you're just like, oh, okay. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I need a break from healing. Oh, sure. I don't know yeah. about you, yeah. but sometimes 100%. Like, and I remember we had the same teacher for 300 hours, it's Juliana so and I. It's so funny. So me and Heidi, we've had this weird life where we've kind of followed each other. And we both did our 300-hour teacher training in the same school, in the same with the same teacher in India at different times. In the same year, oh, though, right? Crazy. In the same, same time. year. And both have very similar experiences with it as well, how we kind of felt like... And he, but he said you this know, thing it, like, yeah. that I found really, I don't know if he told it to you, like uh, for meditation, what can be your obstacles? And one thing for him was watching Star Wars or something like that, because he spoke about how that actually can become a samskara. That's something that we watch on a screen. There's actually no difference between your brain our, thinks that. our reality, yeah. because we're in it. We believe that, I don't know, like Johnny Depp is this character. We don't really make a distinction, and like, that mm-hmm. really hit me. How that can like implant us, and then like we reincarnate, and we have that as as a memory. I'm like, okay, That's but so also we carry it forward afterwards as well. If that imprints mm-hmm. into your mind, I'm curious, like because you taught teacher trainings and things even post the pandemic mm-hmm. and through it. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, through. Yeah, it. I was leading two of them, a 200 hour and a 300 hour that had to be transferred online. Wow. Because we were right midstream. Yeah. And do you, like, so. did you find that all the students, like, they brought that fear? Like, did you feel the energy slightly different? I did. But, you know, they had, when we had to close our studio temporarily um, for a couple months, I had never been online. I'm mm-hmm. like, what the, do I, so I did. I mean, I had gone through all the, like, but I couldn't leave my my community down because mm-hmm. so many people close their doors. Well, I'm just not going to teach online. I don't like it. And it's like, wow. oh, so this is about you? Walk yeah. in a room, playing your playlist. I go, this has never been about me. This is an act of service. And I'm not letting my people, which mm-hmm. we were in Florida, a lot of them were in that high-risk range, which mm-hmm. none of them died. But they didn't know that. They're getting told every day by their television that their age range mm-hmm. is what's going to go, right? Between 50 and what, 75 or something. And so I remember giving myself like a week and going, oh my God, am I done? Is my Mm. purpose over? What do I do? Because none of us knew. I mean, there was so much going on. And I remember I said, you know what? I need to, I can't leave my people hanging Mm -hmm. because they come in almost every day and they're looking for just guidance through whatever in life. And so I remember getting on, there's like 50 people on the Zoom, the first class, and they just were like so grateful that I hadn't left them because that would have been easier for me. I had to learn this whole time. I had to buy a new computer, order it through online because all the stores were closed. Yeah, like yeah, this yeah. whole thing. Oh my goodness. And I remember it's like it helped me every day to show up. And I felt fine because I also had just become a hypnotherapist a couple years prior where I knew exactly how the subconscious mind is programmed. Mm-hmm. It doesn't know the difference between reality and, and whatever's not happening or what you're imagining. And so their worst case scenario of like, oh my God, I could die. And they're just seeing that their mind going like a freight train. Mm -hmm. So my job every day, because I know I was speaking to the middle, again, because both sides, believing Mm -hmm. and thinking and voting different things. And that wasn't for me to tell them, but to keep coming back. Here's your nervous system. Here's your immune system. This is what we're going to do. We're going to help you sleep tonight. We're going to imagine your lungs filled. I mean, I literally, and I I take responsibility for keeping them all alive. (laughs) Because every day they were tuning in. I'm like, all right perfectly pink healthy lungs like I was taking them to the ideal (laughs) scenario and I pulled all of it out I'm like here's your lungs here's your nervous system your immune system getting stronger brought all of this to light and told them they always had a choice Mm -hmm. right turn it off go sit in your backyard you have this beautiful house you get to enjoy it now and I kept pointing them to what was still there Mm -hmm. stop going to the what if stay present with what is right here right now you're alive you're healthy stay there (laughs) Worry about the other when you get thrown in the hospital, if that ever happened, which right. it didn't for the majority of at least my students and my, my community mm-hmm. that I was working with, but every day. And I felt like, again, as I got up, instead of being stuck in my place going, what now, what next, here's our business going under and all this stuff, I kept showing up for them mm-hmm. because I wasn't afraid. I really wasn't because I know how my mind works. I'm not afraid of death. I've lived my life. I'm serving my purpose. And I thought, you know what, if this is what takes me, 
I'll go out graciously. Mm. And in fact, there were some days where I'm like, if this keeps going, take me any time. <laughs> like I'm ready because I'm not afraid of what's there next. I'm afraid of what this could turn into. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like I don't want to be left here. And as the souls were leaving, I kept saying, you've completed your mission. I'm like blessing these souls and the thousands mm. and millions of people that passed. I didn't see that as a bad thing. They're going back to spirit. And yes, yeah. it's tragic on our human level for yeah. losing our loved ones. But even then I kept telling like, look, we all have a finite period. Like let's negotiate our fear with death here mm -hmm. because that we do have control over. We're all going to die. Yeah. Hopefully mm -hmm. it's not tomorrow and it's not because of this, but right now you're still healthy and alive. Like stay present, mm -hmm. right? That's, That's part of the path too, right? Is not mm -hmm. getting so rushed off in the future or glomming to the past. Mm -hmm. And each of them is like a lifeline, but in turn, they were keeping me in business. Right. They were keeping me employed. I mean, there were days where I'm like, I didn't have to take the government handouts, thank God. Mm -hmm. And even though our whole business had been taken and I had to switch everything, and there was a lot of loss on a personal and professional level mm -hmm. and rearrangement, but it didn't take my health, it didn't take my family, mm -hmm. my people, my community, but it required every bit of me to get uncomfortable and get mm -hmm. online and to do all this stuff that I didn't have to do before. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't easy. Still isn't, you know, mm -hmm. and I just thought, hey, if I can do this and they're like, oh, and then I find the man of my dreams in the darkness of the world. So was it all bad? I don't know. I mean, this is yoga too. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. Like, yeah. let's observe the reality right now and see, like you said earlier, when we're in it, we can't see that, yeah. but eventually we won't be yeah. in it. And then what's all the beauty that came from these last two years? And maybe we need to A focus lot. on that Wonder. too, right? Because yeah. even like what you're saying in terms of like, you know, you learning how to be online. It's like, if you didn't have to really just be thrown into it and get uncomfortable in the online world, something what are the that chances were, I would have done it? Like well, I would probably, you probably <laughs> like, would have. Boho Beautiful, they're online, yeah. they know what they're doing. You're like, you had your thing physically. <laughs> yeah. And now because of that, like even with this whole new way the of doing training. the teacher training, you would have never even exactly. wanted to do something like that if you didn't get uncomfortable mm -hmm. in that space. So it, in a way, you're looking at the dots are connecting, exactly. mm -hmm. even though it took us through mm -hmm. a little bit of yeah. a, a washing machine. And maybe know? the good and the bad and that level of yeah. duality and labeling is the thing that it's teaching us to realize that to stop assuming if it's good or it's bad yeah. and just to let it be. See what we can learn. How See, is it yeah. causing me to grow, mm -hmm. um, comfortable, change? All of that can just be growth if we mm -hmm. let it, right? And we can see, I think the pandemic was really a test again of the resilience and mm -hmm. how quickly can you adapt? Well, the mm -hmm. one who adapts is the one who survives. I mean, this is like evolution, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and I do believe yoga is that path as well. It's never about being comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I was attached to being in purpose and of service. And that got all scrambled and rearranged. But my ego wasn't so attached. It had to be in person, my student, you know, like the way yeah. it was. And I said, well, wait, this is, a, this is service. And if they're still willing to show up for me, then I'm not going to let them down. Mm -hmm. And they still, to this day, and I tell them every morning, I go, you guys, thank you for supporting me and keeping me in my purpose because mm -hmm. it could have been gone just like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we could all say That's that, amazing. right? But they kept showing up because we kept showing up. Yeah. And they're like, we couldn't have done this without you. I'm like, neither could I. I would have been in the unemployment line working for some corporate sell out my soul, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's not that I'm beyond hard work because this is hard work in itself, but I right. never was once like, I'm just going to lay down and let this take me. Mm -hmm. But I would look up like, what job could I even go to work for somebody else? Like, I don't even know what that looks like, but I'm not beyond, right? I'm yeah. not going to just, so I think it, it required all of us to really see what we're made of mm -hmm. on such a deep level, mm -hmm. but it was also a test of faith, like you had mentioned earlier and this interconnection and what carries you. And I do believe that if we're doing the right work we're meant to be doing, whatever that is, the karmic repercussion of all the good we put out, I feel like that's really what carried me mm. through the darkness right. of this pandemic and relocated me to Tennessee of all places. <laughs> like my whole life looks nothing like it did pre-pandemic and it's all good. It's yeah. beautiful. But it was, yeah. you know, in the midst of it, it took away my jungle, took away my family business. You yeah. know, I was just like, what now? And I just kept asking and praying and, and being guided. And then you, and then you step up to that, that action, right? Yeah. As the opportunity comes or that little clue presents itself, you don't shy away. You get uncomfortable, dive in. And I always think of my mother would always say this. She's like, uh, necessity is the mother of invention, right? If we're not oftentimes forced mm -hmm. beyond our control or our will, would we have ever made that move? Mm -hmm. yeah, no. You know, it's so true. In, yeah, uh, yeah. That's in, like in Chinese, like cri like crisis is also opportunity. It's mm -hmm. the same it is, word. Yeah. So it's kind of I also love in that. politics. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a huge political thing. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Oh, my God, I didn't know I was a politician. <laughs> I yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> I love it. That's funny. But in all the of connections, it as well, I think the idea of trust. 
-hmm. that's something that really speaks because it's yes. like yeah you're having to kind of change your way and but in this of it all you're trusting that it'll take you to that right mm -hmm. place and that trust comes with a deeper connection yeah so trust in a different. higher energy and trusting well really that's one of the definitions of faith trusting in the invisible right mm -hmm. trusting in that support or guidance yeah. that might not always be clear yeah it sometimes and very rarely it might feel like wait is it even there mm -hmm. but you know when you develop that connection that trust deepens mm -hmm. and it definitely carries you and trusting that you are guided no matter yes. what the circumstance bring your way and the hardest times for it like when you're in the deep the lowest the dark night of the soul mm -hmm. you know in the really dark place, trusting that you'll get out of it. And making a decision. And making a decision to focus on the light. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it can lead to the greatest awakening mm -hmm. if you let it. Exactly. And that's, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, so when it comes to teacher trainings, because you have this one online, mm -hmm. um, and, and we've talked a lot about, we started at teacher trainings and to bring it back around to that, yeah. one of the biggest questions that we always get um, from people is, do you have a recommendation or how do I choose the right teacher training? Yeah. What would you say if someone asked that to you? I don't know that they'd ask me because they just sign up and, and <laughs> take my training. No. But if you, but if you weren't, um, you, but no, say. I would really say it's like, a, what do you want to get out of it? Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said before, do you want just to strengthen an asana practice mm -hmm. and go that route? You can. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for more of the spiritual awakening, that spark? Are you looking for tools and techniques to apply it to your life? I think that's really on the student to inquire and say, mm -hmm. what am I wanting to get through the experience? But then what am I going to do with this at the end? Mm -hmm. Because I, I think a lot of times people, at least in my experience, it's been some do come in thinking, I definitely want to teach. Others come in and say, I'm just doing this for myself. I just got off the bad relationship or this, that there's some life crises opportunity, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. challenge opportunity that's happened that they just want to take time for themselves, right? Whatever that looks like. But I would say if the person, the student can just get clear and say, wow, what is it that I'm really hoping to get out of this? Right. And if they can't answer that question, then much like Juliana's experience, they might do a Google search and just kind of see, but to let their intuition or their heart guide them mm -hmm. instead of just the, you know, lineage or the teacher itself, like let, let yourself be drawn and pulled and then to trust that sort of in, intuitional or instinctual hit. Who who taught you? Like we know who taught yeah. her now. Well, it's funny mm -hmm. because my first teachers, they're no longer teaching. They mm -hmm. were a husband wife couple. And this is part of the, the other part of that story was I went in, I had been practicing yoga for quite a while. They were based out of New York at the time. And went in and they were probably in their thirties. I was 20 something and thought I'd gotten, you know, pretty far in my own healing taken some classes and done like little mini teacher trainings. Mm -hmm. And I was already teaching, had this world religion degree, which was mostly yoga philosophy and Edwin Bryant, amazing Sanskrit scholar, PhD. He's just, he's written a translation of the sutras. Oh, so wow. he was one of my professors. So I, I got it academically, experientially, right? So then I go into this training with them and they were the real deal. And they taught me, you know, he was raised in an ashram, Charles Matkin. He was raised in an ashram, and so his rebellion, he's from Canada, mm -hmm. his rebellion at 16 was to stop meditating and to move to New York City. And he's like, and he taught me something very valuable. He said, you know, I was, I was raised in a spiritual community that was what we might call pretentious, mm -hmm. meaning they would spiritualize everything. Everything happens for a reason, and there was no heart, there was no depth, there was mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. nothing real and authentic. Right, as he was saying, he goes, it was like, oh, they would just spiritually intellectualize everything, like, oh, namaste, like, but yeah. there was, they would bury the, the pain, glamour. right? They We've would seen just that a lot. We see that a yeah. lot, right, in, in yeah. ashrams, and so his rebellion, and not ashrams too, and, yeah, and in, <laughs> and in life and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes to, you know, he has his own story and going whatever, and so his wife had a different take being born. I mean, she was beautiful, raised with, you know, her mother. I think was like a Playboy model, and just with this sort of sexualized beauty, you mm -hmm. are what you look like type of thing. But she struggled with a lot of addiction and stuff like that. So they both come in. They were very real. They showed their darkness. They never said, put us on a pedestal, because mm -hmm. I very much emulate the way that they've taught me to be. But if I had any other teacher, I don't know that I'd even still be on this path, quite honestly, because wow. I, I don't go through just the motions. And mm -hmm. I needed somebody that was deep and would speak to me. 
So I remember going through the training and I came in intellectually knowing a lot, like right. academically, and even they'd refer, they're like, you probably know this better than we did. Like you did a whole course on Bhagavad Gita, sutras, whatever. And I never came in like, ooh, I already know this because I was humbly wanting to learn from them. But they taught me how to be a decent human, but also a humble teacher. And they're mm -hmm. like, you know, we can bow to the gurus, but they've still got their stuff, you know? Yeah. So like, just keep it real mm -hmm. and remain humble. And I remember going through, and I'd already been teaching. So I was one of the few that was already teaching classes. And I walk in and I go to teach my class. And I, had, I used to have this like voice that would come in, like the yoga teacher voice. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't like speak, but I, I felt like I was channeling, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like me trying to figure things out, but it was just something I'd open up to and it'd come through. But if people didn't know that, it might have come across as inauthentic or like I was hiding behind this. So sure enough, Charles, I go through this, which I think I did it perfectly. Because remember, I'm operating from a program. I got to be perfect to be loved, mm -hmm. right? And still didn't know this at the time. So I go through this class, lead them through. I walk back to my mat or I'm walking back and Charles calls me out. And he goes, technically, that was great. You know, you did all the right things and the sequencing, whatever. He goes, where's Jackie? Hmm. And I just was like, okay, because to be seen, right, mm -hmm. was a, a scary thing as a right. child. So I got really good at being invisible. And I'll just show you how good I am or smart or whatever. Love me for that. Yeah. But you're not getting in here, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to feel me or know where this is coming from. And not knowing that at the time. And I looked at him, and I'm, so I'm operating from this ding, 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 ding. Oh my God, I'm not perfect. I failed. Like all this stuff came crashing down. And I look at him, I go, well, what do you mean? He goes, that was great. He goes, but it wasn't you talking. I couldn't feel you. I couldn't see. Like, where were you? Hmm. He goes, I saw a yoga teacher, mm -hmm. but I want you. And I was wow. like, somebody wants to see me? Like, it was just, again, and I, <laughs> I go back to my mat and the ugly cry. I'm talking <laughs> ugly. I was in, in a child's pose and it's just mucus, like everything's, <laughs> you know, that, you know, you just can't catch your breath. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm going to run the fuck out of here. I'm never coming back. Like, I was so triggered in that wow. moment. And again, in teacher trainings, it's like, really? So I remember other people are teaching, and we had a rule, much like I instilled in our satsangs, where you wouldn't go to placate or comfort someone. Just let them have their emotional bowel movement. Wow. Mm -hmm. Come back to them later to give mm -hmm. them the hug or whatever. But don't stop the process, because it's typically those watching that are most uncomfortable. Me, I was like, I can't stop this if I tried, right? So I remember getting up, trying to sneak out. And all of a sudden, Charles is right there, dead in the eye. Another piercing blue set of eyes. I'm like, oh, my God, what is with this? He looks me right in the eye. It's like he knew my problem. He goes, you don't have to be perfect to be loved. I was like, how the fuck did you know that? You know, I'm like, what the? And he goes, but that right there, he goes, that's who I want to see. I want you. I want you and your vulnerability and your authenticity and all your wounds and darkness. Like, yeah. that's who we want to see. And that was really the, the next level of opening. It was like mm. they broke me open and... It was just like, oh, wait, I can be seen and I can be vulnerable and I don't have to be perfect to be a yoga teacher and it's okay to have a messy past and, you know, all mm -hmm. these unhealed parts because it's real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many people are coming to a yoga class healed? Perfect. I don't know of any of them, you know, nope. especially if they're being honest. There's, you know, so that was a major, and I did two trainings with them because, and, and then even technical alignment. I mean, this mm -hmm. guy was so meticulous and so precise. So yeah. it's like, I feel like everything I learned, I learned in kindergarten, my first 200 hour, mm -hmm. I went on thousands of hours of trainings. But again, much like you, I never found that heart to heart mm -hmm. depth and authenticity and realness. And I've had a lot of great teachers, yeah. but it all came back to the seeds that they planted. Yeah. And it kept me humble. It kept me without ego in my work and like really, yeah. So I bow to you, Charles and Lisa Matkin. They're yeah, really, we're huge on setting me on this path, That's not amazing. just as a teacher, but my own yeah. healing as well, another key component. That's so beautiful also when you speak about the, the whole, like, don't bow to me, I'm your teacher, like the whole guruism. Because that's something I've always had an issue with is like some teachers out there, they almost like, they put themselves on a pedestal and they want people to bow to them. Yeah. It's power. The power. Mm -hmm. And we've seen and, that in the yoga world. Oh a my lot God. of manipulation. Or even the sexually, fact when they're like, emotionally. Exactly. Oh, or when they're like, well, who did you study with? Mm -hmm. Like That's there's a like terrible this weird question. They're looking like, for the hierarchy. Like, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like, does it matter? Yeah. Like I studied me. I went on the mat and like mm -hmm. I went through my journey. It doesn't exactly. matter who led me through it. Yeah. Of course it matters in the, the decision. And you know, I would yeah. say like, well, I, cause like to go back to that beginning story, it's like you yeah. 
were the person that guided me to it because you never put yourself on a pedestal yeah. because you didn't say I am the right way. Yeah. This is how to do it. It's like yeah. you shared your vulnerability, your past, even all of those things that was like, wow, you're a human being. Mm -hmm. You have so much healing and darkness that you went through yourself. Mm -hmm. And that was so relatable. And that allowed me to, to like feel safe to enter my own mm -hmm. space. And that's you know? part of, again, as we come back around leading by example. Yeah. I'm not a saint. I'm not perfect. Oh, you know, right. I use the cuss words here and there. Like there's just, I think means. we have this image yeah. of like, oh, you have to be up here. And I've had, and you guys have probably had this throughout your lives too. People, well, that's not very yogic. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You want me to be a doormat right now? You want me to people please? You want yeah. me to tell you what you want to hear? Because that's not yoga either. Mm -hmm. Like we have a right to get, exactly. you know, fierce or protective or whatever yeah. we need to do. But the realness of it. And I think the leading by example, which is what they did to me. And then that was my duty to pass that on. Yeah, and, and just like you exactly guys are doing in the work did. that you do. Yeah. And I think that that's ideally, again, yoga teacher training, getting back to your question is like, look for the person that's actually living it. Do they have a happy life? Mm -hmm. Do they have good relationships? Are they angry and bitter and trying to project that on their students? Or are they actually living these mm -hmm. teachings in whatever way they're expressing that? Mm -hmm. And would you want to lead that by example? Would you want their life? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, because I've had yoga mm. teachers come in, they're broken. Oh, I hurt my arm and I did this. Oh, I hate men or I hate women. Like they have this like edge. You're like, ooh, yeah. I don't want, that's enlightenment. I don't want to do that. It's like, or they're telling you this is the only way or they're yeah. guilt tripping you. I'm like, I don't think that's, it might be for some people. Yeah. Some people need to be told right and wrong. I just wasn't one of those people. Yeah. I needed, show me what I could become, yeah. That's right? Show me what I want to emulate in mm -hmm. my own way. And you found what you needed. Yes. It, it's funny. Like, I think that's like when we talk about our individual stories about teacher trainings, mm -hmm. even if it's not the perfect thing that we thought we would find mm -hmm. in some of ours, it we found you. what we needed. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, which is fascinating. Like, um, which it sounds like you needed someone to say that to you. Like you don't have to you be did, perfect, yeah. you know, and like give me permission to be vulnerable right? in my pain and my healing and my past, which mm -hmm. to that point, I'd kind of like, well, I made it through. I'm so grateful. And if I go back there, it means I'm not grateful for where I've come. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. It had to happen. Otherwise it'd still be haunting exactly. me and it would still be showing up. Because it doesn't just go away. And you ha obviously had the faith to continue. Because yeah. the ugly cry can make you run oh, pretty God, far. It was... <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you don't like show emotion in public. Back then I was like, oh, don't be, right? You got it all yeah. together. I'm like, Meh! And I wasn't going to come back. And oh, I came back. Yeah. Because he gave me permission. The faith yeah. And they didn't run from the room. And people didn't laugh and point fingers. Yeah. And, oh, look at that hot mess. And then it like, actually, I became like the emotional crier of the group after that. Like <laughs> everybody else wanted to then participate and get and pull away there. And I was like, oh, well, thanks. And they're like, this is great. Like you kind of led the you way started here. It, and I'm yeah. like, oh, there we go. Wow. So that's yeah. so beautiful. And I'm curious, like, how was your training, Mark? I know, Mark. Mine how was, was your? Oh my god. Did they push oh my any god. buttons? And... Oh my god. Um, why? Because any I, exorcisms? I, I've alluded to it a couple of times about just the idea of there's this whole industry of, or factory farm of, you know, the industry of creating yoga teachers because there's a lot of money to be made, um, and I think innately, I think or maybe karmically, like I have to face some of these things to find peace with it. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to face the concept of an in, like, cause you know, whether it's, you know, the big pharma industry or it's, you know, like the, the big music industry or now what I've seen is big yoga, which is kind of funny to mm -hmm. say. Um, I think I had to be thrown into that karmically to find my peace with it, to find what I needed to find on my journey, which is the union of accepting that it's there, while at the same time acknowledging it, critiquing it, but experiencing it to all of its ugly sides. And we went to the other side of the world, to mm -hmm. India, because we believed at that moment in our time that the teachings would be that much more significant to myself spiritually. So we and went to the very north of India, Dharamshala, mm -hmm. kind of where the Dalai Lama is, because he was something that really pulled us mm -hmm. and the, the Tibetan culture. How and could there be a bad yoga teacher training if it's close to the, the Dalai, Dalai Lama? Lama. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Unless he was teaching it, right? <laughs> and then, so we kind of separated for a whole month and I went to one school, um, just to kind of cross the hill, that was, that was doing the 300 hour. And then Mark went to a different school that was doing the 200. So then we could go through that experience together at the same time, but obviously mm -hmm. we couldn't do the same training. Which is mm -hmm. cool because it was in Dharamkot. And it's, so it's on the base of the Himalayas in the, like uh, just the, on the mountains leading up to the peaks. And it's really beautiful, it was so yeah. beautiful because yeah. all like, there's all just little yoga schools and little restaurants and establishments with like little mountain paths. 
Uh-huh. Between, so, so if you want to, like, did you see each other? Or are you telepathically we, communicating? We would we would meet <laughs> once a week, once like a week, every day off, which was on okay. Sundays. We would go for yeah. breakfast, and then otherwise we just you know we texted and yeah, and, and, and over the phone, but that was it. That was like separation. Yeah, but okay. it, it was mm-hmm. funny because I showed up to you know, and I was like, I'm gonna yeah, you know, I check. I did all the research we always tell everyone to do, like make sure the teachers there are good and make sure that there's a certain amount of students so you get the right attention. Mm-hmm. And like we, I checked to make sure that the diet would be like. It was a satvic diet, and so all of the things. And I was like, "Oh, and I can even reserve my own little private room," um, and that would be wonderful too, because I could just look out onto the mountains, and it'll be in Indian so nature. This, and like, like so, I created okay. this euphoric, silly yeah. expectation. Utopia. And and the forces that be in the universe guided me to the exact opposite of everything that I wanted to think <laughs> would allow me to ascend spiritually into. It, How was it the opposite? Well, I lived in a tiny basement apartment i couldn't like stand up with oh. it was a dungeon on no a mattress view. on a floor with no view and no nothing and but you wouldn't and, see the donkeys walk yeah by i would see the donkeys sometimes the satvic cool. diet was a joke and they turned this school had turned yoga into such a thing it was like they said no more than 21 students and there was 53 students oh, wow. and so like the first day you show up you're crammed in a room it's like and then the teachers were all mm. guru- well not all of them they had a, a team of teachers but the head teacher was just like I, like he wore, it was weird. And not to judge. And yeah. I know we've had conversations about this, not on the judge, but he showed up wearing Nike and like sat at the front of the room. <laughs> and he's like this Indian guru wearing his Nike and stuff. Like his identity is just like oozing through. And I'm like, oh, that's weird. And so I had to deal with that mm-hmm. internally and process it. And maybe he was so much over it that he could, maybe that he could wear Nike. Tur- it didn't turn- mean anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turned out it wasn't quite that, but it, okay. you know, it was his identity of being the guru. Mm-hmm. And it turned into this really weird mm. power struggle with him because I resisted so much of the school and I resist, like I wanted it to be something it wasn't. And through that resistance, um, I think that's what shined the light on what I needed to learn. And I didn't learn very much yoga. I, you know, like it was good in alignment. It was good. I mean, because it was so saturated, like like he didn't even get to teach a class. I taught 15 minutes of a class. Like they had to separate. Everyone gets 15 minutes in little groups. Like that's it. Yeah, it's so strange. And and, and and some of the there was a few like because they had a team of teachers and I you know became I I became kind of like the rebel of the of the school in a way because. Not that I would speak my mind in the sense of trying to fight it, but like there was this time when Juliana found that the Dalai Lama was doing a teaching for foreigners. Um, for foreigners, so in English. And this is a very rare thing. And he, he announced it not publicly, but just like in the town. And so Juliana on one of the Sundays is like, did you hear about the Dalai Lama? I was like, no. And she was like, yeah, we all signed up to go. You have to take your passport down to the office. And he's doing a very, very intimate teaching for foreigners only. And I was like, oh my God. Like once in a lifetime. Once in yeah. a lifetime. Actually. And I go running back to the school and I, you know, I tell the head teacher, like this guy that I'm speaking of, and he's like, oh, well, we won't be doing that. You have this class and this class and this class that day. And I'm just like, and to me, that's just like, are you kidding me? Like that the anatomy, like, or whatever it was that morning was like not that enough. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, that <laughs> the Dalai wait. Lama's here. Yeah. And it turned into this. So then I get in an argument with the guy and I'm like, how can you say that? Like, that sounds ridiculous. Like this is the, the spiritual teacher of the world. And we can actually, all of these Westerners who somehow descended upon Dharmkot out of like some random miracle of time and space, well, the Dalai Lama is still present in the body that he's in, is here and offering any one of us to come and sit with him. And so it turned into this thing where like half the students were very A plus B equals diploma because he said anyone that goes won't get their diploma. So half of them were like, well, we can't go. And the other half were kind of like on my side and like, they're like, of course we're all going. If we all, if we all go, they can't kick us all out of school. And I was just like, fuck it. Like if I don't get a diploma, that's not why I'm here. So I led this like weird, like revolution. And I was like, we're all going. And then there was this other woman who's like, no one's going. And we had this secret. (laughs) meeting after hours and it was just like it was and it melted my mind and in the end you know I went and they tried to fail me and take my diploma away and most of the students came and as because most of us went they couldn't actually take my diploma away so it was like power of the people in a way Mm -hmm. Um, but it was just like and that through the learning of like standing my truth and being like I'm not here to have a piece of paper tell me that I've, you know, which I Completed, thought for, yeah. like that, that, that India was, was all these things. Like yeah. it gave me everything I needed. Mm-hmm. So it was a terrible school. 
And it was a wonderful teaching by the Dalai Lama. Yeah. Um, and it was a wonderful experience to face all of this all of this conflict inside myself and then in the in the construct of what that yoga school was. It was a school within the school itself. It, right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was yeah. teaching completely different, but that's something that you need to be taught. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. it was funny because it told me ahead of time that everything it was going to be was what I wanted it to be. And then I showed up and none of it was that. But it wasn't in the package you thought it was going to come exactly. in. Yeah. Exactly. You got actually more. You yeah, weren't going yeah. for the Dalai Lama, but you got the, yeah. For sure. For yeah. sure. It was like, so I don't know. It was like, and I, I we left like, and I, you know, it took me a while to process through it. Cause it was a really, like I got six, like I, go, I went through a lot of like Indian food poisoning okay. too. It wasn't sattvic food at all. Free pancha karma. Yeah. Universe. So like, <laughs> so I was in the, I had an IV hooked up in like the little oh, clinic man. in town three times, I think, Fair because it was man. just like every time wow. I, in fact, the first day of school, we both ate at that little vegan restaurant and we yeah, both, we got, both sick. got terribly oh. ill. I had to be taken to like this little wow. village hospital in India and get poked. Like it was a really Tra yeah, traumatizing so, experience. Wow. So, so, so we went through a, a big initiation in India. Oh yeah, the whole thing. We've kind of developed through that trip like a love-hate relationship. I, <laughs> India is, is intense. It it's is so intense. intense. It's, it's beautiful intense. in so many moments, but really difficult just in so many ways that to this day, I still don't think I could go back. Maybe in a few years, there will be something that pulls me again, mm -hmm. yeah. which can happen. But right now, I'm like, no, I don't I don't need to go back there. Um, it really... But, it, it demands like it demands you to become something that you're not comfortable being so to to accomplish what you need to accomplish and then that in turn teaches you and it's how comfortable can you be in the uncomfortable and then when you leave it you're like do i really want to go be that uncomfortable again <laughs> like there's other uh, ways yeah. there's other ways to grow system of the world it's a witch it's a digestive system of the world mm -hmm. oh my goodness and yeah it makes sense yeah wow yeah well it's funny because i was just thinking that same thing it's like this karmic cleansing and purging, which if we ever do any type of detox or cleanse, it's mm -hmm. usually uncomfortable, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You might start to feel a little ill or a headache mm -hmm. or whatever as these toxins are being pulled. But I agree, my time in India, I wasn't doing a training, just a retreat. Like the first day I'm sitting there meditating at this ashram that we're at, like family home of a famous yogi who's no longer in his body, but his wife still runs it. It's very small. And these two dogs come and jump on me as I'm meditating. Like first morning of India, I'm like, oh shit, India's got it out for me. And I was like, okay, don't think this trip is going to go how I thought. I mean, there was just many circumstances right. of, again, just humbling you to mm -hmm. your knees. And I didn't get sick, but there were other, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. things of discomfort that you're like, okay. And by the time I'm like, I got to get out of here. I thought I was coming down. I just, meningitis just seemed like the worst thing I could come up with. I don't fully understand what that is, but I'm like, I'm getting something like my, I just felt ill just from the yeah. air and yeah, the, the energy after different. a while. It was just, but then I was fine when I got home, mm -hmm. but it was definitely, I think, like you said earlier, like it, India is its own initiation yeah. for sure. Did you ever go back after that? I haven't. No. No, and I don't really have a desire. And honestly, Costa Rica, the jungle is my India. Mm. I feel mm. more power and more connected to God and Bhav, which they say a lot in India, the energy of the Bhav, in, in pure lush nature mm -hmm. than I do in man-made temples. And I just, and I was looking for that in India. Because mm -hmm. I was looking for, ooh, you know, if I feel this way in Costa Rica, and right. yeah. rainbows appear on command and all this stuff, it's like, in India was, it was almost the opposite. Like went through all these pujas and these ceremonies and, it just, I never really got my, you know, deep connection that yeah. I was looking for. I guess I got it in different ways, mm -hmm. right? The unexpected. But Costa Rica, I feel like the jungle, which I know you guys can all relate, is it just, there's something there. It's like the mothership of, of my type of yoga and communion mm -hmm. is with nature. Yeah. And that to me is the, the clearest and most beautiful expression of God or the divine. I 100% relate to that. Yeah. I feel like in Costa Rica as well, like the veil is thin. Like oh, there's, there's I don't like, think there is one. And then when people aren't prepared, like <laughs> yeah. that, I'm like, the jungle is its own energy. It's a truth serum. And yeah. if you're hiding behind anything, no, it, will pull it, it is going to take you. And I've seen it take people to the hospital to the, and I'm like, I'm immune. I'm like, it doesn't do it to me. I'm like, cause I know yeah. like you saying you lost your bags when you showed up, yeah. like people lose their computer for a week. Cause they yeah. planned on holding up in their room. You were just like, no, you're going to play with the others. This just happened last year. And the guy's computer arrives the day he checks out. I go, well, you passed the test. Wow. Jungle's wow. going to give you your computer back mm -hmm. but you hear these I mean you guys live there so it's yeah. just like you're in it all the time but when I come in for a month or six weeks and leave like it's such an obvious shift mm -hmm. 
Like, why direct, do I leave? I feel like I have superpowers there. <laughs> like, oh, you really? feel like you have superpowers? Like, I call it What's jungle that? GPS. Like, you don't need cell phones. You just think of somebody and it's like, dang, oh, there it is. I'm like, dang, why that's do I leave? The, thing, the thought immediately taking form. Yes. I had moments yes. where I was like, oh, really? I'm not going to take myself out this week because it will be I, immediately there in front of me. Yeah. You have to, and you do. And I, I warn people, I'm like, careful what you say. Like, one girl's like, snake, snake, snake. And before we know yeah. it, snake's oh. falling from the ceiling. I'm like, it's it is literally like there is no yeah. separation between that thought if you're connected. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I see other people kind of grapple and trip mm -hmm. in the jungle and it's mm -hmm. not good. I'm like, just just surrender. Yeah. Well, well it's going to be so much like easier no if you time. just surrender. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a it's timelessness. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. I, th I think that's interesting about the thought. Like, when, what you speak in Costa Rica somehow has this way of come together it, come, it, it, it becomes realized yeah. and and then so if it becomes like you get stuck in that in that negative side of Costa Rica which is like the the resistance against the jungle mm -hmm. and we see this a lot like people come and they're like I'm just gonna live the perfect life and, and it's gonna be leave. in there and, and <laughs> yeah. it's like and then you get and the then, rain and the roads mm -hmm. and the bugs and because the, uh -huh. everything the simplest things are so difficult in Costa Rica that when you don't surrender to it you focus on the negativity and the more you focus on the negativity, the more the negative begins to happen. And it, you watch the cyclical cycles begin to, to take a hold of people mm -hmm. and it chews everyone up and spits them out so quickly. Mm -hmm. And we've had our moments, even these days, it's been so difficult for us yeah. in Costa Rica. We're like, is this really for us? Like, is this, is this where we thrive? Is this, is this feeding mm -hmm. us? and our soul as much as it's taking or, or is it taking more from us and it becomes and that's a beautiful place to be i think is in that that questioning because uncomfort brings growth and, and you're also aware of that power you right. can be humbled by it but also oh. lifted by it right, right? Yeah. depending it's yeah. almost like a little test that totally. you're and it, it sounds crazy like when i step outside of myself thinking about how we're talking about the jungle, the jungle is an entity. But it it's really an entity. is. It's like, like dealing with a person, and <laughs> but even more powerful. And, like, it, like. <laughs> and until you recognize that, it's so funny, until you actually recognize that, it, you won't survive. And it doesn't like everyone. No, it doesn't. Like some people are not meant to oh, go totally. there because karmically, whatever, I'm like, and I, it's interesting. So there's this guy that came to retreat last year and he's, he didn't like flying critters. There, mm -hmm. One just flew by. It made me think yeah, of it's it. It's the wrong place to be in. Yeah. And I'm critters. like, what the, and this is like, you know, grown man. And he's the one that lost the computer. And he came with his uncle and he's like, I don't even know how I ended up here. I like five-star resorts and all this. I'm like, well, you're not in a five-star resort, but <laughs> nature, you know, just, just listen. By the end, this guy fell in love. Cause again, he couldn't be attached to his computer mm -hmm. and his escape because the universe took out all of that. And he ends up getting, get, ends up getting a wasp tattoo by what? the end of the trip. A wasp I of all things. That. I'm like, you pass in one week. Wow. This transformation of this guy who didn't even like nature. Wow. Right, or hanging out. And wow. he just, he, he surrendered. Well, he had to because the mm -hmm. computer was taken away. It was given back. Mm -hmm. But he made friends. He, he's like, mm -hmm. and he, at the end, he's like in tears. He's like, first of all, I'm not emotional. He goes, second of all, I think the jungle, I impart jungle now. And it was just amazing to see mm -hmm. wow. when people are willing to give it a chance mm -hmm. and work its power and its magic. Mm -hmm you will come out brighter and lighter mm -hmm. and, and more connected. Mm -hmm. But there's also, and we also had a woman come in, this was on my retreat, but somebody else's while I was doing the teacher training from New York. They've got rats the size of humans in New York. Like it's not like New York's without its, you know, problems, New York City. She came in for one night and was freaking out over a little gecko. Geckos aren't going to harm oh you. God. I mean, there's enough in the jungle you. that will take you, but a gecko geckos. is not it. Oh, my goodness. She was stayed up all night. She even had the mosquito net, and she was in one of the nicer rooms. Watched this little gecko all night, was so freaked out, left the next day to go back to New York City. No. And I thought, wow. well, there you go. The jungle will kick you out. Like, it yeah, just ejected. Find the thing. It yeah. finds the thing that it, will force it you. It finds your weakness, yeah. your vulnerability, and if you don't, like, see it in the magnifying glass, mm. it will keep. It's like, but it's wow. sad how disconnected we are. Like, I used to be afraid of bugs when I was a kid, and that now I was just like, oh, a tarantula. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, take, <laughs> I'll take him out. You're I mean, really good with tarantulas. She really was. You're really Heidi good. lived with us <laughs> in Nostara for like three weeks, and one morning um, I actually had to drive uh, Mark to the airport, the little airport, and I come back, and I had Heidi watch Xavier. And I come back, and I am like, there's Heidi standing at the front door. There's a giant tarantula with Tupperware over top of it, and my child <laughs> standing looking at it. I was like, 
Okay. That was, She's of the jungle. That was 20 minutes. Yeah. So I found a tarantula. And I was like, what are you going to do? She's like, well, I'm just going to take it into the jungle. I like and I was like, Heidi, you do your thing. To she, walk them into the jungle. She, she took yeah. it across the street, released it. You in did the that with scorpion, a scorpion yeah. on the couch, too. Yeah. 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 But like, that's the thing. You kind of learn. I'm like, yeah, there's a tarantula, but it's. You, we are living in the jungle. Exactly. Like, We're in their home. We and are I tell exactly. everybody that I'm like a hipster. Yeah. You're not going to smash it. You're not going to yeah. kill it. We will take it out of your room. Like mosquitoes, mm-hmm. that's a whole other story. It's we haven't difficult. evolved beyond that yet. But yeah, the mosquitoes are difficult. Yeah, yeah. especially when you've had dengue, which yeah. I have not from the Montezuma area, but a different area. Yeah. But I'm like, you know, and there's the one time my room was getting taken over by ants. Always oh, the, the army same ants. Army ants. Yeah. They're and amazing. they were breeding in every drawer. They were in my clothes, but I was so like, they're on my hammock. And I remember sitting out on my step, just going, that's okay. I'm just going to let them procreate, do their thing. Thinking mm. they'd just leave on their own. I leave my room. I come back and the coast streak and the maids are banging out. They're killing all of them. I'm like, no. And they're like, they're ants. They get, you know, and speaking yeah, in Spanish, yeah. I'm thinking, okay, maybe I took it a bridge too far when I'm not even like allowed to be in my room because the no, ants have oh. taken over, but I just so didn't want to you yeah. kill them. Like there's things I'd put up with in the jungle that I wouldn't at home. Like if yeah. ants were all over my house, I'd probably do something to get rid of them. Yeah, yeah. But in the jungle, I'm like, well, I'm in their house. Totally. Like they're letting me in as a guest. They're not going to kill me. Hopefully. They're making love. Yeah, and they were making, and it was like the queen ant was in, she was in there like making her babies, there's little ant eggs like everywhere. Oh, I was like, oh. oh, and I look back and go, was I insane? I go, no, no I was just you, in the jungle for a long yeah, time. Like you become the jungle, you're like, okay. Well, ours were the army ants. Ours when we come well, those home. Those are insane. They yeah. take over. Yeah, well, that, we had to leave the house. We would always leave the house. We like, oh, they're out, and you see the colonies. There's two colonies, and different we like types close of the door. Oh. We're like, let's go back to Love Burger. No, no, but like, like, like set the stage. Like we yeah. would come home to this yeah. little yellow house in Samar on the Hill, and once a month it would be like war. And it's the, the cleaner ones? No, no, like it would be the black, bigger ants and then the lighter colored red ants. And they would be coming oh, from either side like of the house. Two gangs coming to fight. Yeah, and it would be like, and <laughs> we walk like in. the entire wall. The entire wall, Bills just like pouring like, down. Like and we'd just be like, one color. oh, fuck, let's go. And we'd leave. And like, then we'd come back and there'd just be they'd ant be carcasses everywhere. Oh, And they wow. just had battled it out. And it would just be like, and they'd eat each other and do, and it would just be like. But then they would be done. And like, be we'd done. clean up a little bit and move on yeah. with our day. We're like, but <laughs> the it was The first time it happened, like, it was insane. And well, because the first time we called our friend, Fab, who was living just down the street, because he's been in Costa Rica for 10 years now. We're like, Fab, what do we do? He's like, There's like an ant attack. He was like, you really can't do anything. You just gotta like step you aside. have to literally let them do their thing because they'll leave. They're not going to like take over your house. They're just mm-hmm. having a battle in that moment they chose your house for it. So after that, we just learned. Anytime you see the two battles come in, you really can't interfere. There's yeah. nothing you can do. You just have to remove yourself for a few hours and then come back and let them do their thing. Let them do their thing. So creepy, though. That's, that's, their, that's yeah. nature. Like, again, we are stepping in their home. Like, well, and even the weather in Costa Rica, yeah. that determines what you're doing that day. Oh, like, yeah. Like, if totally. it rains, it rains. If it's nice and beautiful, you're, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's, like, you don't get to... You don't, you everything's so really accelerated. Don't get to decide. It's yeah. so extreme. It forces you to live in the moment. Yeah. Less activities. Mm-hmm. Like, if you can do in a city, like, you'll mm-hmm. do four or five things, choose to. You cannot go to you can go to the bank and maybe teach a class, but not everything, not the third thing. Choose yep. to, no, yeah. it's true because it's so t- it's yeah. so hard. It's and the lineups of the bank are insane. Why do people wait <laughs> in those bank. big lineups at the bank in Costa Rica? Everyone's just like, oh, 30 people. I'll get. I'll be 31. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to the fucking bank like, today. Do you need to do the bank people. right now. <laughs> like, if there's even money in the ATM, which there never is in the yeah. small oh towns. But, oh, Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah Costa Rica is so funny. But it, I mean, that's the thing, and I love it because you know it brings and keeps the right people, mm-hmm. and that creates a really beautiful collective energy and and i encourage anyone that feels the calling to go and 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 to explore that calling because there's like you like the jungle and the energy of it is such a it can be such a beautiful giving thing Mm -hmm. for the for what you need in your life that's one of the reasons i love doing the teacher trainings in that environment Mm -hmm. and so i'm grateful to be able to do both get people in the practical lifestyle of doing it from their home and their daily life and schedule Mm -hmm. but still getting that exquisite sort of jungle baptism, mm-hmm. right, of immersion, yeah. because that is like the epitome of living in the moment, letting go of all your creature comforts mm-hmm. and your attachments, mm-hmm. and just being with nature. I mean, yeah. it's really, it, it's it's so profound and powerful that I, I have yet to see that be recreated mm-hmm. anywhere in the Western, yeah. or not Western, but in the United States kind of overdeveloped areas. It requires on some level to go off that beaten path and kind of live as I believe the ancient yogis might have lived. I mean, at least we have beds and we have food served to us, mm-hmm. but you're, 
it's outside and it's rough and you're letting Union. the elements and the weather and nature decide yeah. what's mm -hmm. happening that day instead of another agenda. There's yeah. no televisions and there's just no interference, I and think, between... practicing the surrender, too. Yes. That's such yes. a huge component. For sure. It is. Yeah, it's everything about it. it. And so at the end of your upcoming training, there's mm -hmm. the 10 days um, in the jungle. In the jungle, they'll um, teach the first full class to so, the group so and graduate. So yeah. if anyone wants to sign up, yeah. Where do they go? So they can go to my website, JackieChioto.com. It's mm -hmm. all up there. Mm -hmm. And they can start either October 6th, they can start in December mm -hmm. or February. All the dates are listed there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And so, when does the jungle immersion Yeah, begin? the jungle immersion will be next September. Okay. So 10 days next September. We have and those dates are on in our too. calendar, well, I know we do. I'm just trying to think. 2023. <laughs> yeah. 2023. Yeah, and it's going to be at a new place, Copa de Arbol, on the Osa Peninsula, mm -hmm. which, as we know, Corcovado National Park, wow. like most biodiverse ecosystem. It's just, again, and like Montezuma is beautiful, Nosara. As you guys know, those places are getting busier and oh, more yeah. developed. And oh, yeah. not that that's bad, because mm -hmm. the local economy, you know, there's, yeah. there's a balance to everything. It's changing. Yeah. But this is on 70 private acres. You can only get there by boat, which wow. is five minutes around from Drake's Bay Airport. And you're right on the beach with the whales coming up and a little bit more higher end than some of the other places in terms mm -hmm. of newness and, and cleanliness and so forth. Um, but delicious food. And mm -hmm. I'll be there in January to check it out and hopefully see you all yes. when mm -hmm. I'm back down in Costa Rica. If you guys are back down there by then. We will be. We will be. There, be. January. I can't wait to come to Ocean. Yeah, Pins, and we'll so. twist your arm to be a little special guest to lead uh, us on don't a have to twist talk or something. <laughs> More podcasts to come. <laughs> yeah, we're More happy podcasts to, to come, today. exactly. Um, but yeah, no, it's just such an honor. And I think I mentioned this before as we spoke, like I, I feel like we're both magnificent trees and our roots are now yeah. kind mm -hmm. of coming together to collaborate and align. And I think again, leading by example, you mm -hmm. know, yogis on different ends of the spectrum but with the same core philosophy and depth and meaning and, and purpose. It's like we want to serve, we want to make this world a better place. So I honor both of you and the work that you're doing. Thank and you, well, so likewise. happy to be part of this and the podcast. Yeah, and, and we're just yeah. so humbled to have you yeah. as well. It's yeah. been such a beautiful conversation. Yeah, and and just to even reconnect again with you after like 10 years and we finally know. met, it's like, wow, it's such a full circle you know and the jungle brought us together exactly. again the at the jungle. same place yeah. it was just so crazy the alignment how, of that is you know and I didn't even I, and again I'm barely tuned into the outer world of like podcasts and yeah. social media and I remember when the trainings was last year yeah. and I, the girl goes oh yeah boho beautiful I'm like Oh, beautiful. And they're like, Juliana. I'm like, Juliana. And she's like, she shows me. I'm like, oh, Juliana. Oh, my God. What have they done? This is amazing. And like yeah. seeing, I'm like, oh, my God. This, the whole world I wasn't even aware of. And so I'm so grateful. And then you guys show up. It was like, you know, well, sn there you are. I snuck into one of your yin classes. So yeah. cool. I know. It was just great. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like, we couldn't even have planned that if we tried. I know. No, it's so universe. now it's just like the ripple effect yeah. of where that has the, now taken oh, us. Yeah. So. The universe was just like set that up and we're like, all right, now we're running with it. And yes. have to. So up cool. this yeah. new path for us, which is amazing. Exactly. And here we are today. Mm -hmm. and I hope it's so. the beginning. I know. I love it. Many new things to come. I know. So. I always love sharing conversation with you all mm -hmm. and you as well. Thank so you, Jackie. I was so curious to meet you and I'll Yes, <laughs> I know. I love it. What a great platform yeah. to do it. So, well, thank you. wonderful. Amazing. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> <My goodness. laughs>